It all started one year ago at Victory Road. You see everybody on their team, they sense and they know that they're watching something that's very special. A year of sacrifice. Year of battling against all odds. Look at that combination right there! This is everything we thought it would be and more! They faced a turning point. What is he doing? No! No! Wait! You've got to be kidding! With an unbreakable will. And knew no surrender. Unbelievable! That's the only word that describes it. Now they are bound for glory. Did you see the great moment? Did you see the style? This is the night of their becoming. The crucible of their yearning. Their chance to grasp immortality and embrace the tree. Did you see that? We talked about how he can do things that nobody else can do. How does anybody even? Tonight, visions will be realized and hopes dashed in an instant. Tonight, boys will become men. Men will become warriors. And warriors will take great strides on their way to immortality. This is the grandest event in TNA history. This is the night of their lives. Wrestling presents Bound for Glory. Not even Hurricane Wilma can stop the biggest event, the biggest pay-per-view in TNA history. Tonight, it's our Final Four, our World Series, our Super Bowl, all wrapped into one. Thank you so much for joining us at Bound for Glory.
just signifies how big this event is. And TNA is so proud to join with our brothers from the Orient in a working relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling that brings you these kinds of incredible superstar athletes. And you see them only one place, ladies and gentlemen. You see them only in TNA. How about the mutual respect that the crowd showed for both these great warriors? What an incredible entrance by Samoa Joe, showing a little personality and letting the world know that he's arrived. And here he is. And then the crowd also showing the utmost respect for Juice and Thunder Liger with the streamers going everywhere into the ring. Mike, it's on. Juice and Thunder Liger, 11 times the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. That's New Japan Pro Wrestling's equivalent of the X Division. Shoulder block. Wow, Samoa Joe leveled Liger, and I think Liger better rethink his game plan. Better rethink his strategy. I don't think he's gonna outpower 280 pounds of this Samoan submission machine. There, there he goes. Oh, nice move right there. And just like you said, maybe he was setting him up a little bit just to get Samoa Joe a little confident in the fact that he was gonna try to overpower him. You're not gonna overpower Samoa Joe. You gotta do it like that right there. Quick reversal. Samoa Joe shoots Liger off into the ropes. Telegraph of the back body. Liger able to catch him with a kick. Samoa Joe, he connects with the elbow. Now Joe's bringing up the ropes. Oh, man. Liger moved out of the way and shot Joe right out to the floor. Liger's gonna fly. Here we go. Oh, look what he does. Just kind of set him up right there. No, nice kick right through the ropes. Faked him out with the first move. Then caught him with both boots directly into the chest. Liger from the top. Right off the top chest. of the ropes right there into Samoa Joe. And this cannot be going the way that Samoa Joe had planned. Here he comes out with all the fanfare. And Jushin Thunder Liger has obviously spent a lot of time thinking about how he wanted to go about this match. Jushin Thunder Liger. His name, his look, patterned after a cartoon character in Japan. Half lion, half tiger, hence the name Jushin Thunder Liger, and Liger high risk from the top. Oh, look at the strength, though, of Samoa Joe. And, oh, it just went right into his plans, and he sinks him back to the mat. Wow. Caught him in midair, and from his shoulder, variation of the fallaway slam, the Samoan drop to Lance Liger, and you're right, Don. Crowd is split, and I think it's because of that respect. Respect for Joe, respect for Liger as well. Well, it's a different feeling than when you see Joe against maybe an AJ Styles. This is their guy, this is Samoa Joe, but yet they know so much about Liger, and they're so glad to see him. It's just one of those dream matchups to these people. Nice knee right there to the face of Liger. Wow. Liger goes down after Joe connects with the knee in the corner. Joe standing over the pro body of Liger. Now picks him up at the head, at the mask. Boy, matchup has turned in favor of Samoa Joe so quickly and oh, knife and chop and then the stiff kick to the chest. Joe goes airborne. That's 280 behind that knee drop across the chest. I'll tell you what, he's just got such power, such force, and it's one of those things where Whenever you're going up against Samoa Joe, and I've asked people to have, they say you just kind of continually prove you can't stop. Because if you give up this guy a chance to get you in a submission hold, it's done. And you can see right there, he's working on it right now on Jushin Thunder Liger. It's the TNA debut for Jushin Thunder Liger, but I'm sure many of you have seen him through the years. Back in WCW World Championship Wrestling, he was the second ever WCW Cruiserweight Champion when he defeated the late Brian Pillman. Hell, Jushin Liger and Brian Pillman, was the first ever match on a little program called Monday Nitro. And Samoa Joe snaps off the slam. Pin it's two. Oh, no, he just gets up in time. I'll tell you something, he hit that slam so quick. It's amazing how quick that Samoa Joe can move for a man of that size. I mean, you saw him just kind of grab him and spin him over him. It's so deceiving until you've watched it for more than a minute or two. It has been an incredible weekend here in Orlando, Florida. It all kicked off yesterday with FanFest. Wrestling fans from all over the globe coming to TNA's Bound for Glory. Being a part of FanFest yesterday, and they're rocking the impact zone at Bound for Glory. Series of elbows by Liger, but Joe stopped him in his tracks, caught him with the knee, shoots him off into the corner. Here comes Joe. I'll tell you what, he, Joe looked like he just wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do. That hesitation gave Liger the, the break he needed, and he's taking advantage of it. Now we're going to see if he's got the strength to put him up in the Air Force suplex here. First, Liger connects with the capo kick in the corner. You're right. Let's see if he has the strength to suplex him. This is one way to do it. Oh, he stops on the foot and it takes him over. One, two, not enough. Liger quickly out to the apron and headed to the top. And from the top rope, oh, he caught him with a frog splash. Here's the cover. Here's two. Look at the power of 
of Samoa Joe. You're gonna need to wear down Samoa Joe much, much more than this before but, you catch him with the three count. But it's giving him confidence. You can see the confidence growing there in Liger and then you get the kick to the back of the head right there by Samoa Joe. Liger went for the open hand palm thrust. Joe moved out of the way and drilled him with the kick. Right back to the offensive. Samoa Joe picks up Liger at the mat, sets him in the corner and now positions him up on the top rope. Keep in mind when you see Samoa Joe, you're often thinking about the muscle buster. Look at this. and Liger saw it, uh, maybe the slickness of his uniform, but he slid right down and used it against Samoa Joe. Knife edge chopped by Liger, springs off the ropes, there's the open half palm thrust that connected, and again Liger off, and he caught him with another one, they dropped him, and decked him, here's two, oh, how close can you get, wow. I'll tell you what, this is rare to see Samoa Joe on his back this many times in any match, but you can get a Liger, you got to feel he's got the whole country statement here. He wants to be the first wrestler to defeat Samoa Joe in TNA. Joe caught him with the kick. Here's the oh, muscle no. buster. This, muscle buster. This is so brutal. If he hits it. Oh, and he nails it. If he can get into the Nikita Clutch right here, they do it. He's got him up. And there it is. The rear naked choke. His signature submission move. The Kakita Clutch. Liger trying to fight through the pain. Oh, is he going to tap? Oh, you can see right there. And I'm seen anybody get out of this. His Liger's arm just kind of limped out right there. You wonder if he's lost all of his air. Oh, look at this. The Samoa Joe is just... That's one. Referee Andrew Thomas. Two. Two. Could this be it right here? Here it is. It's done. It. Gentlemen, the winner of the match, Samoa Joe. The undefeated streak stays intact. Machine, true to his name, he gets the submission win over Jushin Thunder Liger. It was yesterday here in Orlando, Florida. Wrestling fans from all over the globe came to Bound for Glory. They came for a great fan fest. That's right, all the way down from the Big Apple to see the best wrestling company in the world. Total non-stop action. Oh, this is going to be great. I've been waiting for this for six months, ever since I heard about it. There are actually eight pay-per-views out of the 12 fly down almost every month. It's really cool that they come out and do this, you know. It's a good time. There are tons of people here. Lots of people have never met anybody before, and they're really excited. Here, you get to meet everybody. Very, very positive. Oh, it was nice to uh, meet Monty Brown, you know. Yeah. Or walk up, get autographs. This is incredible. The five years out of control. For once, I actually feel like the wrestlers want me here to meet them to get their autograph. That's some pleasure. I think the best word to describe it is electric. This is TNA. This is the promotion that gives the fans what they want. We don't want to see a bunch of soap operas. We want to see wrestling. TNA is the future. TNA is real wrestling. And TNA is exciting. Looking forward to seeing it. FanFest, certainly a very memorable event for the superstars of TNA, as well as all the fans who came from all over the world to be a part of this incredible event and this incredible weekend. It was very special. Mike, it was so wonderful to hear the stories from people to tell you how many matches they've watched, how many they've come to, where they were from, and I mean, it would just get, it would was touching. It would bring tears to the eyes to realize the love that they have for TNA and what it means to them as wrestling fans. Wrestling fans from all over the world, Australia, England, Italy, all over the United States, were with us in Orlando, Florida, as a part of our Fan Fest. And there you see in attendance, TNA Gut Check winners. That's John Bolin on the left, Jamie Dauncey. They were the winners in the National Talent Search. And in November, they begin training at the New Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo in Los Angeles, California, and then expect them to be a part of the TNA roster. What a way for us to start right there. As you said, Samoa Joe keeps his undefeated streak alive. On that note, let's send it to Shane Douglas standing by with Simon Diamond and his Diamonds in the Rough. I'm losing. I didn't recruit you guys because I thought you were losers. I believe in you because I think you're winners. Show me that intensity tonight. Show me the intensity. We'll do it. Show me why. We'll do it. They're pound for pound. Tonight it starts. We got now let's it. go out there and show them why. Right, we are diamonds in the rough. Let's go. Come on. 
The following contest is a six-man tag team match. About to make their way to the ring, they are the team of David Young, Elix Skipper, and Simon Diamond. They are the Diamonds in the rough. I'll tell you what, this is the team that I've been expecting big things from from the moment they started. You got a, a man with the drive and the competitiveness of Simon Diamond, and he's gone out. He's turned David Young around. He's rebuilding prime time Elix Skipper into the champion that he once was. Don't be surprised, your Mike, if this team doesn't become a major force in the tag team division. The experience of Simon Diamond, combined with the athletic ability of primetime Illick Skipper and David Young, they form the Diamonds in the Rock. Simon, we have a problem. And introducing their opponents, first of all, from Puerto Rico, this is on, Apollo. Baby. And his tag team partner from the Isle of Samoa, Sonny Siaki. From 20,000 leagues under the sea, this is Shark Boy! You ready for six man tag team action at Bound for Glory? Diamonds in the Rough to be tested by the trio of the Masked Man, the cult favorite here at the Impact Zone Shark Boy, as well as the superstar from Puerto Rico, Apollo, and the tag team partner, Sonny Siaki. This is going to be all about cohesion. This is going to be about which group works together the best. And you realize that the Diamonds are up may have an advantage in the situation. Although Apollo and Siaki lately together have been devastating. They've got so much raw skill. I wonder how Shark Boy's going to fit in that equation, but he gives them a little bit of a, a speed factor, something a little different than what the Diamonds and Rough are used to. Simon Diamond, the 15 plus year veteran of professional wrestling deciding to take primetime Elix Skipper and David Young under his wing. He sees them as diamonds in the rough. Let's be very honest. David Young, Elix Skipper, over the course of the past several months, they have not had the best one loss record in TNA. But Simon Diamond thinks that when he sees something in them, thinks that he can bring out that potential. He knows that they have that great athletic ability, and he thinks he can form them and turn them into a winning combination. And we've seen it with athletic teams. situation to Simon Diamond and his Diamonds in the Rock. Well, he told me he gets almost all his inspiration from Charlie Weiss and how he's just so offensive-minded in what he's done to that program, and that's what he's trying to do with this program. And right now, I like how he's taking the initiative. He's going out. He's not one of those kind of leaders that sits on the sideline. He goes out first to let David Young and, and Prime Diamond and Skipper know that, hey, I'm your leader. I can do it, too. Attempt at the DSD, the Dead Sea drop out of the corner. Oh, the power right there. High hip toss style takeover by Diamond. Goes to drop the leg, but Shark Boy moves out of the way and avoids the contact. Well, that's that quickness I was talking about that Shark Boy gives you. And here uh, comes the bite. He's got it right there, and it's just humiliating. You ask anybody that's in a match with Shark Boy, and the last thing they'll tell you they want to do is get bitten on the butt in front of a crowd. Takes you out of your game, causes you to lose your focus. Something that we saw from that pep talk earlier where Simon Diamond was trying to fire up. This man, Elix Skipper and David Young. Drop toe hold, takes down Skipper. I'll tell you what, great move on the part of Shark Boy right there. Skipper was coming in just full force. Shark Boy again, out caught him and was able to get the drop toe hold. But now the power and the strength of Prime Time Elix Skipper is taking effect. Don, we still do not have words as to the opponent for NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, Jerry. We know that Championship Committee member, Larry Zabisco, will have an announcement for us. We just don't know when that announcement's going to come, and we don't know who the opponent's going to be, but we do know that Jared will defend the title tonight at Bound for Glory. And again, I, I mentioned it earlier, what's got to be going through the champion's mind right now? He has no idea who he's supposed to be preparing for. It can go both ways. Pin attempt by Apollo, but Skipper able to power out before the three count. I'll tell you what, this guy's so big and he's so strong. I mean, Apollo, I mean, you, look how well-built that Skipper is, and you look at him next to Apollo, and 
nice kick right there in the face. He has just got so much power. Look at this. Oh, man, that was wicked. Half Nelson slam. Quick pin attempt by Apollo. Wait a minute, Simon Diamond distracting the referee, senior official Rudy Charles, just as Rudy went down to make the three count for the pin by Apollo. Keep your eyes on David Young up on the corner. Oh, nice plan right there. Here comes Young, and Apollo doesn't see him. And Young hits him with the elbow. Well, you know, that had to be part of Simon Diamond's game plan, part of his strategy, taking the referee away from the scene, distracting him. There was no tag by David Young, but he hit that top rope elbow. A little reversal at him right there. Just kind of a, a reversal of direction, the referee not realizing what's going on, and that's the teamwork, and that's what we're talking about. And they've got Apollo just bottled up right there, and they spin it around and slam it down. Well, talk about teamwork, talk about a double team, just what we saw from Skipper and Young, and the Diamonds in the rough. They are really taking control of this six-man tag. Apollo just not able to use his size and strength in there right now. It seems like he's got two-on-one -on, -one on him every time, and you can see the quickness of the tags now with the Diamonds in the rough. As they're starting to see their game plan come together, oh, nice shot! He just kind of turned him inside out. Almost as if he was going to leapfrog over, and Skipper caught him with the shoulder block, then hooks the near leg, goes for the cover, just barely gains a two count. That'll give you a wicked Charlie horse right there. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's, that's strength when you can put a guy the size of a bottle and turn him upside down like that. Oh! Man. Apollo elevating Skipper high into the air and then catching him with the cutter on the way down. Oh, man, that hurt. It was a desperation move. Apollo slow to react, now finally tags in Sonny Siaki. You talk about the fresh man on a roll, and it's Siaki with right hands and clotheslines. I'll tell you what, I just get more impressed with Siaki every time I see him. This just guy's got so much energy, so much strength, and man, is he, got on, is he on fire right now. Quick pin attempt by Siaki, broken up by Skipper. Shark Boy can't take it. He's in the ring, but it's not helping his partner any because referee Rudy Charles is once again distracted. Siaki's still fighting back against Skipper. Yeah, that's where not working together comes into play. Shark Boy should realize that he's not doing Siaki any good by keeping the ref focused away from him. That just comes from not working together. Oh, the force that David Young gets Siaki into the turnbuckle. No, caught him with the cutter out of him. Caught, took him up from his shoulders, dropped him down. Opportunity now for Apollo to put David Young away. Look at this. Skipper comes right at the back, and they crashed into Siaki. You can see Siaki right there, Dave, trying to figure out kind of where he's at, what corner. Now he's going through the ropes. I think he's going to go after Skipper. You're right. Siaki and Skipper battle on the arena floor. Shark boy. Here he comes. Cross body block on Skipper. Skipper barely getting his arms up to deflect the, the force of David Young. What's Simon Diamond telling David Young to go over? Look at the size of this guy. Here he goes. Oh, my oh, my gosh. He piped it out like a bowling ball. Screaming off the middle rope. David Young took it down and then Simon Diamond walked right into the Apollo super kick. That's a big boot, too, man. Oh, wait a minute. Here goes Apollo. Oh, Simon Diamond, though, grabbed Apollo and slammed his head into the steel rail. Into the ring post, I mean, and oh, man. Now you just see it's just all broken loose. And Shark Boy taking his shot at the leader of the Diamonds in the rough. Siaki and Skipper battling in the ring. Other action outside as well. Elevated up is oh, Siaki into the spine buster by Young. Ooh, he's done it. The Diamonds in the rough win it. The winners of the match, the Diamonds in the rough. The progression with this team, and what a way to set it up! And that spine buster that David Young does is so wicked, and it just knocks the breath out of you so fast that it's hard to recover in time to get your shoulders up. How about Simon Diamond and the influence that he has over Elix Skipper and David Young as the Diamonds in the rough gained the victory at Bound for Glory? And hello once again, everyone from ringside, it's Mike today, joined by Don West here at Bound for Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, if you joined us at the top of the hour, you missed the first 30 minutes of this three and a half hour pay-per-view event. Don, it was a great four-way matchup that we kicked off Bound for Glory tonight with Sanjay Dutt, Austin Aries, Alex Shelley, and Roderick Strong all in action.
Well, it's what the X Division is all about. It personifies what the X Division is all about. The speed, the skill, the agility, and this is what we're talking Take about. Take a look at this. Planted it right there, and here he goes. Oh, wow! Wow! The reversal! It's over! The winner of the match, Dante Dutt! Sanjay Dutt was so spectacular in that, and he took so much beating in there from so many people, but able to come out victorious, and we saw him hit the hurricane run, and then the dragon run at the end. This guy is unbelievable. He's got so much agility on these ropes, Mike. That was not the only story, however, of the first 30 minutes of Bound for Glory. How about that confrontation in ring between Raven and Rhino? Roll it. Zabisco, you have 10 seconds to get out here, or I come in the back and I hunt you down. Somebody is gonna be first in Jared tonight, but I'm gonna make the decision my way, not your way. If I were you, I'd go ride the mummy. If your name is picked, I'll send I'm gonna give you one last chance, Zabisco. Yes or no, Zabisco? You backbiting, ass kissing, two spinning. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Jared, get him up. What happened, Raven? What happened? Five years ago, you crucified a man. Five years ago, you took a man's family hostage and you enjoyed every minute of it. What happened, Raven? What happened? Did a girl get to your head, Raven? Did a girl get to your head? Did a girl? You don't deserve that title shot tonight. I deserve that title shot tonight. Why? Why don't you deserve it, Raven? Because you're pathetic. What is he wow. talking about? Did a girl get to your head? Uh -oh. oh, you can see it's on right there. The mid ring while security escorts Raven out of the arena. Oh, he got gored. Gored. I mean, Rhino calling out Raven, basically telling him he's lost part of his manhood. Holy pathetic. I know it. But all that to me is everybody wants a shot at that title. And now that there's a title shot open, everybody's going to be jockeying with Larry Zabisco to try to get that exactly. spot. Exactly. But, Don, we still don't know who's going to get that world's title shot at the NWA Championship, Jarrett. But now let's send it back to the franchise, Shane Douglas. He's standing by with the champ, the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett, and Gail Kim. Standing by with Jeff Jarrett, the holder of the most prestigious title in all of professional wrestling, the NWA World Heavyweight title. Jeff, I've got to ask you, who's it going to be? We've all heard about the unfortunate occurrence with Kevin Nash, and already the Sharks are lining up to get a shot at your title. We saw earlier Larry Zabisco being petitioned by the likes of Rhino and Raven. Everybody wants a shot at your title, Jeff. Who's it going to be? Bound for glory. Everybody's up in arms about it, aren't they? Let's put on the brakes just for a minute. Kevin Nash, the hospital? I didn't believe it when I heard it, but I had to call and verify. Can you believe Kevin Nash? He will go to all lengths to get out from an ass whooping from the king of the mountain. I mean, he heard that I was gonna have a funeral here tonight for somebody, and what did he do? The wake's been going on for 10 years. Oh, he checked out way too early, and now Larry Zabisco. Oh, Larry, you got your work cut out, don't you? You got Raven and Rhino up in the ring. They're, dri they're driving themselves. They've got big, uh, uh, what? Rhino's got a big monster's ball. He he's completely lost all focus. Larry, I'll make it real simple. Put all the names in a hat, draw one out. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Let's see. We got the charismatic enigma. Screw Jeff Hardy. You got Rhino, the man beast. Screw Rhino. <laughs> you got the Monster Abyss? Oh, oh, yeah. Screw Abyss. You got the Homicidal, Suicidal, Sabu? Screw you, Sabu. And then you got Raven. What about Raven? Well, guess what? Screw you, Raven. <laughs> Say it. Say it to my face, Jeff. Say it. What are you talking about, Monty? What are you talking about? Calm down. Screw Monty. Say it. Now, why would I say that, Monty Brown? Come Silence. on. Silence. I smell it. I smell the fear, Jeff. You are scared of the alpha male. <laughs> and sooner or later, I will get you on the Serengeti. 
And I'll show you why the alpha male is at the top of the food chain. And then I'll be taking that. Monty, 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 you got it all wrong. Certainly you got to impress the champ, but tonight you better impress the championship committee. You better impress Larry Zabisco, because you know what? There's a six foot nine ticked off Texan out in the ring. And you know what? You get beat by him, you're gonna be falling off that proverbial mountain. And I know one thing, it's a long climb back to the top. Don't you worry about that six foot nine ticked off Texan, cause he will be tumultuously taken out, perpetually popped with the pounce. Period. Monty Brown, the way I view it, it's playoff time, and you cannot afford a loss. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. About to make his way to the ring, this is Lance Hoyts. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to make mention that tonight's pay-per-view is dedicated to the memory of the man who made Milwaukee famous. Our ring announcer, Jerry Borash, his favorite wrestler of all time, the legendary Crusher, who passed away last night at the age of 79. And this is his opponent from the Serengeti. This is the alpha male, Monty Brown. Well, this is a man, Mike, today that hasn't forgotten that Jeff Jarrett had promised him a title shot long ago. And it seems to be that Jeff Jarrett's done everything he can to avoid getting in that ring with Monty Brown since that day. But you can see that Monty Brown, now that it's in play, they're all going to come out of the woodwork. And Monty Brown's been wanting that title for a long time. No question. Everybody wants to influence Larry Zabisco and the championship committee as we await their decision on who gets the title shot against Jeff Jarrett and the NWA World's title belt on the line. You know, we've referred to Bound for Glory as our Super Bowl. Well, you know that the alpha male Monty Brown is not going to be intimidated by this event because he's been there, Don. A veteran of two Super Bowls with the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills, and you know that he loves the center stage at a huge event just like this, just like Bound for Glory. I'll tell you something, Lance Hoyt, this is his opportunity. This is his opportunity to beat one of the biggest stars in our business. He comes out here and takes it to Monty Brown. He opens up everybody's eyes. In fact, he'll open up Larry Zabisco's eyes right here and now, tonight, if he can do that. And then a clothesline from this six foot nine inch, 275 pound, tick off Texan. I'll tell you what, he's also very agile for his size. And man, he's got a game plan right now. And it might be the Buddy Brown's mind. He's focusing on what might happen later tonight. And I'll tell you what, Lance Hoyt's focused. He's not letting that bother him. He's had one thing on his mind, and that's beating the alpha male. Well, you said it right. That strategy employed to perfection here by Lance Hoyt. However, once the action comes outside the wall of the six-sided ring and on the arena floor, the alpha male takes over. Look at that vicious boot. A lot of times people wonder why a man gets out of the ring and goes away. Well, they do that to separate a little distance so that they can get things in. Oh, he was going. It looked like he was going to throw it right into the rail. They moved out of the ringside area. I can tell you that. Fans in the front row, they ran to the back because they thought, oh, look at that move. Straight shot cross body block by Big Lance. Well, Monty Brown was just kind of pontificating in front of the crowd over there, saying he does it his way. But Lance Hoy took advantage of it. What's the word you use about Big Lance? The crowd here in Orlando at the Impact Zone, they've adopted him as one of their own. They've seen him grow up as a professional wrestler right before their very eyes. Ah, you can see the fan fest when we were there, the lines that he had in his table to get autographs. I mean, this guy is somebody that they've watched grow up in wrestling right here at DNA, and he's their guy. But he's got a tough task in Monty Brown, and let's face it, this is a guy that, whether it's tonight, or some other day, we'll wear that gold. You can bet he'll wear it. 
series of those knife edge chops. Directly to the chest, then the open hand slap to the chest of Big Lance by the alpha male. I'll tell you what though, Monty Brown I think is just taking it, taking Lance Hoyt a little bit for granted. He hits him a few times and he thinks the blows are so strong that it's gonna take Hoyt out of his game. We can see that's definitely not the case. From the corner mouth, Lance Hoyt, you can hear him chant Hoyt in the background as every right hand makes contact with the top of Monty Brown's head. You know, a lot of people, oh, oh, oh man, that last one, he kind of had a delayed effect right there. Monty Brown, I think, just got dizzy when he started walking over. Look at this. I told you he's agile for a big man. Oh. Monty Brown was setting him up. He, he sure set was. him up. He just lured him right into his web. Hoyt going for that top rope moonsault is my guess. We've seen that from this big six foot nine inch Texan in the past. Monty shoots it out to the floor oh. and the snap suplex. Wow. I'll tell you what, Monty Brown, you gotta give him that. He took every one of those shots from Lance Hoyt. Kind of dazed out there in the ring, fell down. Hoyt used it as an opportunity to hit him with that big moonsault. And Monty Brown got up and was waiting on him. Alpha male. Slings Hoyt into the ring. Now grabs him in the head as Lance Hoyt all of a sudden gains life here with a series of rights to the side of the head. I think the alpha male was surprised. Well, I think he kind of pulled one of the, uh, the alpha male's moves. He kind of played a little possum right there, but oh, you can see the power of Monty Brown right there. Released overhead slam by the former National Football League linebacker. Six feet, two inches tall. A rip, a shredded 257 pounds. Hear the crowd trying to get Lance Hoyt pulled up. Also yelling for the bounce, and you see the big boot right by Monty Brown's head. And, oh man, this could be his moment for Lance Hoyt to be successful. He not only needs to avoid that pounce, but he needs to hit a powerful offensive move like this one from the top. Can he do it? He hit that top rope moonsault to perfection, but miraculously, Monty Brown kicked out. Oh, you could see Monty Brown was trying to set him up for the pass, but Lance Hoyt knew to grab a hold of those ropes. You don't want to spring off of him. Oh, no, look at the spring. Look at that pure roll. Oh, oh, wait a minute, alpha bomb. Lance alpha with the bomb. Oh, my God, what an alpha bomb that was. Nearly One, hooked. two, no, not enough, and Monty Brown can't believe it. Look at the look on his eyes. Hoyt couldn't believe it earlier. Monty Brown at that point, when he drove him down with the alpha bomb, thought he had him in the one, two, three for sure. I don't know though that Lance Hoyt has enough to avoid what's happening here. And, oh, he does! There he goes! Good choke slam on Monty Brown. Powered him down, pinned him. Oh, had both legs hooked. Still life left. Still gas in the tank of the alpha male. I'll tell you what, these guys are obviously know each other and I mean you can see Lance anytime that the pounce looks like it's inevitable he's got something there and that's the only way you can beat Monty Brown. Oh Monty Brown holding on to those ropes. Hooking that top steel cable is Monty Brown to avoid Lance Hoyt trying to shoot him off. Now the exchange both men landing right. Oh, oh big no. uppercut shot by Big Lance. I'll tell you what Monty Brown is feeling it man Lance Hoyt he's arrived folks. This is the only it is.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's Global Impact. Check out this video footage from Bombay, India. TNA star Sanjay Dutt, Simon Diamond, and Shark Boy. Mike, this is just an example of how in demand the TNA stars are all over the world. And in the coming weeks here on Impact on Spike TV, we're gonna show you these stars in Australia, Japan, England, all over the globe. They came from all over the globe to see TNA's Bound for Glory and TNA wrestlers as well in demand. We have a six-man tag team matchup coming next. Let's send it to the franchise. Shane Douglas standing by with one of the two teams, Three Live Crew. Standing by with Three Live Crew, who up to this point here in TNA have proven that the family that sticks together can fight together. But I got to ask you, tonight at Bound for Glory, numbers disadvantage against you with Team Canada. Can this family stick together to fight together? Well, I tell you what, that's what we do best, Shane Douglas, is fight together. We are tighter than pantyhose, two sizes small. We're the gleesome threesome, if you know what I mean. You know what, Team Canada always got that ace in the hole. And speaking of ace hole, Scott Demore, if you stick your nose. Hey, hold on, hold on. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Scott Demore. Here, I am here to offer my assistance on what happened on Impact last night. I'm there to watch it back. You got it, that's a good idea. That's not a bad idea. We're outnumbered. Oh, that's a terrible idea. But you know oh, what? On, that man. shirt right there describes you perfectly. You're a little biatch. Come as on, far as I'm concerned, on, I'm going to stick my foot right come up here. You know what I'm talking You want to deal with that? Bro. We're out. Come on. You got to give it hey, a Hey, you chance. know what? You know what? That's fine. You know what? Kill. Hey, I offered. Come on. That's a good idea, bro. We, I thought it was a good you, idea. Where are you going? The Conan the worst in the fact that Kip James is using 
that family influence to get back in. And I think Conan feels that some of the three life crew is breaking apart. But we saw how strong the crew is, and they survived all that. I think Conan should have realized that, hey, take advantage of the good to get the ones in the world. It doesn't hurt now. Kip Daniels is fine. He's got the ball outside the ring. K Dog on the offensive, rolling Thunder Larry. Takes down Bobby Roode. And there goes the big shoe, the size 13. Bobby Roode down with the clothesline. BG in. Crew gonna try and put Team Canada away early. Oh, look at this. And I mean, when he hits it, he hits it perfect. Oh, he splits the uprights. Wow. BG, James, and Conan make a wish with Bobby Roode and the perfectly placed top rope leg drop by Ron the Truth Killings, the former two time NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Bobby Roode won't be reproducing anytime soon, I'll tell you that. But you can see that he gets right up and goes right after. Ron the Duke Killings wow. and nails him with the headbutt. Man. Bobby Roode pulling out all the stops, including that headbutt. Wild swing and a miss with the clothesline. Oh, look, look at, at the speed that Ron the Duke Killings did that. Whoa. Whoa. What in the world's he doing? I guess he's he'll still keep his eye on what's going on. It's exactly the case. He wasn't welcomed to ringside by Conan, but Kip James has pulled up a chair. He's going to observe what's going on watching from the entrance ramp. What'd that say on his t-shirt? Tell you what, look how crisp and clean. What'd that say on his t-shirt? says, I'm Kip James. Bitch, <laughs> got that right. I'll tell you what, he's making a statement, I think, to everybody that his feelings for BG are that strong. But I'm gonna tell you something, how clean and crisp, I'm gonna say, has been the crew here tonight. They have been on fire, look at the crew. They just hit everything dead on. They have been on their game. Here's the pin by Kelly's on Rude before Bobby Roode powers out, using his leg strength to avoid the three count. Uh oh, that's what Team Canada did. Oh, around the truth, though. And alive, he's over there caught two on one, and able to get out of it. I'm telling you, they are impressive. But, oh, uh -oh. Bobby Roode's got so much strength. Yeah, just too much right there. With the double team, it looked good for killings, but then Roode caught him, took him up with that full Nelson drop as we look over the shoulder. That's Kip James. It sure is. Kip James just sitting there. I can't quite get a read on his face. Or what his thoughts are right now. He's, he's sitting up on the same side that Keith Canada came out of, so keep that in mind. I mean, if you think about it, Kip James made a great point. Every time you see Team Canada in a matchup, you have to keep your eyes around ringside on that cheeseburger-eating Scott Damore. Well, I'll tell you something. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mini cheeseburgers. Probably went down today alone since that's what they were serving. But I will say this. I don't blame Conan either. I mean, you, you gotta be careful who you trust in this business, and I don't blame Conan either. I think he still feels that you see A1 power down. Right. And has he got it? No. The power component, the power man of Team Canada. Big A1 with the power slam on the truth, but not able to put him away. However, they cut off the ring. You got you give them an inch and they'll take a mile, and that's exactly what they've done. Is they've got the truth buried over here in their corner, and they're using every ploy in the book, and they know how to do it. And we've always said it about Team Canada. And you're looking at two teams that have always known how to work so well together, but Team Canada, man, these guys know each other like the back of their hands. Killings tries to fight out of the corner. Oh, look at him go! Oh man, Not cut off that time with the knee, directed into the midsection by Rude. Flying forearm connects. Down goes Rude. Opportunity now for Killings. He can get his bearing straight. I'll tell you what, he's out of breath. To the side of the ring where both BG James and Conan are positioned. Now's the time to get the tag. Now's I don't the know time if he knows where he is. is. You can see him looking for him. Him. He's dazed and confused. Oh, he is. He's out of breath. He's, he's lost his motor skills right now. There he goes, but he's got BG James on the tag. Oh, Big right hand man. drops Eric Young. There's one for A1 and a third. Nails Bobby Rude. No, he just one right after another. Oh, he's just gonna cycle him out. He's got the boot up. Drop Eric Young with the boot. Little shimmy, shimmy, shake, and then the knee drop. Pin, legs hook, but the Canadians are there. You know, it may look flashy, but he uses that to get more momentum when he sends the knee down, and now it's 
all broken loose in the ring right there. It's, I think Team Canada realized that Eric Young was getting close to being pinned. Well, you're right. All six men now involved in this matchup outside the ring. Ooh. Killings is posted. Actually sent in to the, the railings for the Ultimate X. For those of you who haven't seen it, the Ultimate X, of course, coming on later. It's an unbelievable oh, event. Oh, no. Keep your eyes on DeMore from outside. Oh, no. oh. He's hit right on the head of BG James. Oh, that's just disgraceful. He just broke the hockey one, stick over two. his head. Got Canadian it. steal one. We talked about Gamore, we talked about the interference, and what did Kip James say he earlier? He warned him. He actually warned him and said he'd be there to be an enforcer. Kip James sitting up there. Actually, Kip James, if you can see, is grabbing And here he comes. He's got the steel chair. Here comes Kip James, and he's pulling. Is he going to do something to run the truth? I mean, a BG. We pull BG James out of harm's way. You can see him right there. He's got BG James out. And the Canadians are holding Conan, and they're inviting oh. Kip James into the ring and hitting with the chair. I knew he had an ulterior motive. He's telling him, I told you I'd watch your back. And you didn't, but here he goes. Oh, no. oh, oh. He just crashed into Team Canada. I love it. Oh, he is there in the middle of the crowd. Can't believe it. Conan can't believe this. That's Kip James. Shane Douglas at the office of Championship Committee member Larry Zabisco. Come on, come on, legend. There's got to be a decision made on this. Bound for Glory, the biggest pay per view in TNA history, and their doctors refuse to give a medical clearance for Kevin Nash to wrestle against Jeff Jarrett for the world title. There are no lack of contenders around here, Larry. Come on, what about Monty Brown? You're telling me Monty Brown can't wrestle for. Yeah, he, of course he can. Monty Brown is certainly capable. What about Raven, a former world champion? Raven? Raven's a nut. Okay, well, what about you got Rhino, Ron the Truth Killings? How about Abyss? Enough, <laughs> Shane. Look at contenders, isn't the problem. Everybody wants a shot. Okay, now look at. I, I've got a lot to do. I'm waiting for a call from upper management. We got, we're, we're pressed against the clock today. I don't know who's going to get a shot, but I'm telling you, somebody is going to get a title shot. Shot at the heavyweight champion, ship of the world, but please excuse me. Give me a chance. i got to do some work, okay? You will be the first to know. Give me somebody. I want Shane to be the first to know. I mean, that's just uncalled for. The only place that Matt Bentley is bound for is bound for glory. The match that I made famous, the Ultimate X. Whoa! The Ultimate X, it's the most innovative match in professional wrestling history. You have the goal hanging in the center across two cables, and there's no way you could possibly get it unless you use your upper body strength climb across and capture what you're going for. It's really challenging. This high wire free for all challenges a man's metal and pushes one beyond physical limitations. You're already doing all sorts of stuff. You're tired, you're beat up, nothing but endurance. So you go through a lot more in Ultimate X match just from holding those wires, just to get that prize. To excel, it takes a very special athlete who can do what very few can do. You think it's gonna be fear, but once you're out there, fear isn't even an option. To wrestle a match, the caliber of an Ultimate X match is some of the worst pain I've ever gone through. The ultimate test of courage and athleticism. High above the ring, look out! Oh, man! Did you see that? It's dangerous, it's scary. I'm going in with a winning record, and I'm looking forward to keeping that. I have the most thrilling, devastating, outstanding, breathtaking, extraordinary move in the history of professional wrestling, the Canadian Destroyer. Beware of a man who's gone through three Ultimate X's and come bow for glory, I will come out victorious. And it is time for the most innovative match in TNA. Ultimate X, Matt Bentley, Chris Saban, and the Team Canada captain, Petey Williams. The following contest is the Ultimate X match. About to make his way to the ring, led by Coach Scott Tamor, representing his home country of Canada. He is the Canadian Destroyer, Petey Williams! And he is the captain of Team Canada, former X Division champion, and you can say that about all three men involved in this matchup. 
again. You must climb the side of the ring. You must get to the steel cables. You must take down the X. And the first person who does becomes the number one contender to the X Division champion. And it is a competitor number two, being accompanied to the ring by Tracy from San Antonio, Texas. This is Matt Bentley. Well, there he is, accompanied by the lovely Tracy. But you got to remember, Matt Bentley's the one that called for this match. Matt Bentley's the one that said, hey, I want to be back. He came back. People thought he left. He came back and he's making a statement. He didn't want just anybody. He wanted Petey Williams and Chris Saban, two of them between them, that have been in this match eight times. Yeah, they're doing the Bentley bounce in the pit here at Bound for Glory. Bentley said it best. You can't have the biggest event in TNA history, Bound for Glory, without having the most innovative match in wrestling, Ultimate X. And let's get the introductions of the third competitor. Introducing competitor number three from Detroit, Michigan. He is Chris Saban. I mentioned it earlier, Mike. I asked Chris how many times that he's been in Ultimate X. Five times, six if you count in Puerto Rico, believe it or not. Here's a guy that may know this match better than anybody on the planet. He's got so much skill. He's so agile. He's so strong. All three former X Division champions. This is going to be something special. Oh, you're right. Saban's been there before, but you can say the same thing for Matt Bentley and Petey Williams. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the idea of this matchup is to climb the scaffolds that are on the sides of this ring, and then you must work your way across the steel cables, hand over hand, and take down the X. The first competitor that does so becomes the number one contender to the X Division champion. I'll tell you what, for those of you that have never seen this innovative match before, these guys who have done this so long have a game plan, and you're gonna see so much action in the ring right there. In doing so, you try to get your opponent wiped out, taken out of the ring, so that you can shimmy up that scaffolding and shimmy across that wire to get that edge. Because let me tell you something, if you spend too much time up on the wires, these guys will tell you it is a physical, that you just can't even imagine the pain that they go through. You're right, it takes away all your strength. It saps your energy. Oh, Petey Williams charges into the corner. Saban able to get the elbow up. Stops him in mid-move. Saban gonna try and elevate him and take him up, and does. Oh, oh that's neat, did you see place. that? Neat. Man, that's Petey Williams for you. He's so much more than the Canadian Destroyer. I mean, he is quick, he's yes. tough, and man, he just took advantage of Saban right there, but Bentley gonna come right at him. But just think. If Petey Williams is able to hit that sick flip pile driver, the Canadian Destroyer, if he hits it on Bentley, if he hits it on Saban, you're gonna knock them out and he's gonna be able to climb the cables and tear down the X. Oh, you're gonna see Mike Matt Bentley trying to do the super kick to take someone out. You're gonna see Saban trying to go for the cradle shot to take someone out. They'll use their best moves down low so they can get a high on the Great overhead release suplex by Matt Bentley. Oh, there he goes. And there's the opening. For Chris Saban, Bentley gonna try and pull him down from the cables. Well, I'll tell you what, we've seen people steal him like this, and you can get up there quickly, but Matt Bentley, a veteran, won the very first ever Ultimate X. He wasn't gonna let it happen, and then both of them were reeling in pain. Now, almost an inverted atomic drop, it looked like that time. Precarious position. If you get to the top, if you get to those cables, as we see Tracy up on the apron, looks like she's got the attention of Petey Williams. We've seen this for the past couple of weeks, even to the point where Petey Williams on impact Remember what he tried to do? He tried to give the Canadian Destroyer to Tracy. That was right after he had a big lip lock with her, if you'll remember correctly. Look at this. Oh, uh, he's going right after her. Now, she's got the tools to seduce any man, I can tell you that. Wait a minute, though, while she's doing it, Look Matt Bentley's going up to the top. Great distraction, and there he goes. Just rubbed Petey Williams' face right in those two distractions, and Bentley's going to try and take down the X. Oh, wait a minute, as he goes, Saban takes one. Kick to the back of Petey Williams' head at all. Saban to the chest of Bentley. 
It just echoes throughout the arena. A follow up move is a headbutt, then a forearm shot to the side of the head. PD Williams, you can see in conference, a sidebar with the Team Canada bus, Scott DeMore, working out some kind of a game plan. Meanwhile, Saban on the attack and out of the corner mount on Bentley. I guarantee you, one of the things DeMore's telling is you see Saban rating the blows is do not get distracted by Tracy's bounce again, for that matter. Oh, Saban's got him. Here he goes, and that's all oh, right into Matt Bentley. Took him up on his shoulders and dropped him down edge style right into Bentley. That's the way to do it. Oh, beautiful kick as he sends Matt Bentley inside out. This is his chance. They're both out. Save it if he can get up to the wires. DDT for Petey Williams. Kick to the back of the head for Bentley. You're right. That's the opening for Saban. Can Chris Saban, this kid from Hill, Michigan, in his early 20s, take advantage of this opportunity? I'll tell you something Chris Saban told me, though, is you got to pick your spots. You just can't go up there without having a plan because you get caught, and like you mentioned earlier, my that drop is so far down. And Bentley's Bentley, already got his you're feet. right. He's got both legs hooked. That's the precarious position that you get in. If you don't wear down your opponent sufficiently, you put yourself in no man's land. Oh, look at this! Petey Williams fighting it off. Oh, man, that just hurts when you think about the neck. Uh, go! Saban's neck across the ring apron, and Petey Williams coming to the right drop. Look at that. That's phenomenal. Look, it's unbelievable. Right into the hurricane right runner right there. You can see it cost Petey, too, but that's what you've got to do, is you've got to get everybody Holy else shit. out of the ring, Holy and Petey shit. Williams, if he can Holy go for shit. it. Get one right here. I think Petey Williams, when he landed on that Hurricane Rana, looked like he was favoring his knee. I'm not sure if that's going to slow him down or not, but Williams rolls back into the ring right out here in front of us. Bentley and Saban, they're both knocked out on the floor. Right here in front of us, Big Scott Damore was grabbing on to Jerry Borash and screaming. I don't know what that was all about. Petey Williams looks high above this exciting ring. Is he going to take a shot? Going to try to take down the X, but he's cut off by Saban. Oh, I'll tell you, look, Petey Williams has got him in there. Saban just throwing elbows. Now the crowd all picking sides right now. They're chanting and cheering for all three of these individuals as Bentley connects with the move and takes down both Saban and Williams. A two for one right there by Bentley, but when you do that, it takes a lot out of you. Already you can see the exhaustion on all three of these great athletes. Tracy at ringside. Team Canada coach Scott DeMore as well. Trying to cheer on their men in this three-way Ultimate X matchup where the winner becomes the number one contender to the X Division champion. Whether it's the phenomenal AJ Styles or whether it's the fallen angel Christopher Daniels and we will find that out later tonight at Bound for Glory. In pinfalls, submissions don't do you any good here. There's only one way you win. You get up that, that scaffolding right there, that, that giant pole, as you can see. Matt Bentley's got the advantage, and he can get up there and sh shimmy across. He can steal it here. Remember, Bentley's been there before, won the X Division title in Ultimate X, and now hand over hand, trying to make his way across to tear down the X. But look out for Saban. Saban in the corner. Saban's going to follow him out. And, but right now, it looks like Bentley's got the advantage. He's going to try to kick Saban off, and then he's got a clear shot at it. You would think Saban would have the advantage by being positioned on the ring ropes. Oh, no, look at this. Both men, they're both out there in no man's land. Oh, man, did he get powerbombed down. Oh, my God. Oh, my man. God, a powerbomb from the top of that steel cables. We've got to take another look at that. Oh, that Tracy's expression Holy said it all. Shit. Folks, look how far down this is. Wow. Oh, Bentley's out. Look Think of the concussive effect on the back of your head being drilled into the canvas from high above the six-sided ring. That's the case for Matt Bentley, and now Saban can feel it. I'll tell you what, Saban right now has a shot. Only thing is, I don't think he realizes that Petey Williams is right there. He should have picked another pole. And that's what I'm talking about. Petey Williams got the more always round and keeping him freshened up, keeping him motivated. I think that's a disadvantage. I would say get DeMore out of there. And of course, DeMore directing traffic. I'm sure mentioning it, positioning Petey Williams so that he was there to stop Saban's move and climbing across the cables. And Petey Williams just went shoulder first into the steel scaffold. I'll tell you what, Saban was trying to smash his head into it, man. He's lucky he didn't catch that or he'd, be, he'd have fallen off that and gave Saban everything he needed. Look at them, just throwing the elbows in. Oh, man, there goes Saban. Head first, face first into the steel. And now 
Tahiti. Going to try and climb his way up. I don't think Saban's sufficiently weakened. Oh, look at there. He's got the kick right there. This is a shot. Saban's caught, I think, into the rope. Well, you're right. Check that out. His boot, it's hooked into the top rope. Petey Williams right now needs to not worry about Saban and go after him, but oh, oh no. no. That's pressure. Oh, and oh, now he, he's singing the Canadian national anthem. Well, if Saban was going to sing it, he'd be singing a soprano after that. Oh, man, that Bentley. Don't forget about that. I think we all did. After Bentley was driven down head first by that power bomb, I think we did, and I think the other two competitors momentarily forgot about Matt Bentley, and that was a mistake. You better believe it, Mike. That's just the thing about it. You get so involved with one opponent, you forget there's another one in the ring. You know, your mind just, your, your body takes over. I mean, I've, I've watched so many of these Ultimate X matches where I've seen opponents try to pin people in the ring, and they just do it by instinct and reaction. I mean, wow! A endurance, but this is a chance for Petey. Or Saban, I mean, this is a chance for Saban if Petey and Matt Bentley are both outside of the ring. It's the ultimate in high-risk wrestling, and you just saw it right before your very eyes as Matt Bentley went to climb. Saban able to unhook himself. He was hung upside down, and he fired Bentley off to the floor. Here Look, comes Petey Williams back up. I'll tell you what, so quickly, too. He knows it, man. Saban kicks him down again. Folks, you think it's so easy to get up there, but it isn't. You've got to watch your balance. Oh! Unbelievable! Moore trying to revive Petey oh, Williams. Just on. took your, you took your, your bottle of water away. I don't want any more of that. I can tell you that. Do we have to oh, put up with him. I get him out of here. I tell you what, though, the water probably feels good on Petey Williams' head, though. I'll give him that. It was probably a smart move. Saban again in He's that got ring. the advantage. Saban is in mid ring. He Out is. on the floor, Bentley and Williams. Oh, this is your chance, Chris. You know, a lot of people may wonder why would Saban do that backwards moonsault outside the ring? I'll tell you why. He knows how tired they were. He didn't quite have the, the feel to get up there. He wanted to put them out, the kill shot, so to speak. And this is why, so he can go right up here and take it. Both men are still down. Damore trying to get Petey Williams back towards the ring while Saban gonna make his way across and take down the X. Bentley's just oh. rolling in at this point. He's got a clear shot he right tear here. It, tear it down and become the number one contender. Oh. First time it happened, it did. It, it's just one of the, the drawbacks of this match when you've got people like that. That's it. Anyway, Williams about. thinks he can just pick it up, but they're not. They're and, gonna rehang it. And it's a good call by Mark Slick Johnson, the referee. Due to the importance of this matchup, with the winner becoming number one contender, we're gonna hold things up, we're gonna stop the match, and we're gonna rehang the exit. It's the only way to do it. I'll tell you what, there's so much at stake here. You can't stop Bentley. He's putting the boots now to Petey Williams. I'll tell you what, folks, that's what happens in live TV, and you can see right there, Bentley going after Petey, and this is gonna be something, these guys have gotta be thinking, they've gotta be going after it and be planning as soon as that thing gets up there. This is their chance. Battle ensues out on the arena floor while they hang the X inside this excited ring, and there goes Petey Williams face first into the scaffolding. Another great call here by Mark Slick Johnson. We keep this match going, we hang the X, and we're gonna turn him loose again. Well, it's so important. I mean, he makes sure the fans get their money's worth. He doesn't want it to, to end that way, and you know what? We've had it happen before. It's just the way it is, and now it's reback position, and here they go, it's like a mad scramble. And now all three men back in the game. It's gonna be Bentley first up to the corner and across the scaffolding. We've got the X position back up. Saban is the second man. Now they're gonna try and meet in the middle. Look at this, they're going straight at it. They don't wanna take a chance and it falls again. They're going right for it. Look at this, oh, they both go falling. And look at Petey just 
just standing underneath the edge. He wants it to fall right down in his ass. It's not the way you win the match. situation here. They raise the hand of Petey Williams, the team candidate captain. Oh, Matt Bentley's just furious. Can you blame him? No. And I'll tell you something, Chris Saban has got to be furious. And Petey Williams says, hey, I'll take it any way I can get it. Because this makes you the number one contender. On that note, let's take a video preview of America's Most Wanted in the Naturals. It's up next for the NWA Tag Titles. September the 15th in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, just when it looked like Raven would retain the title. America's Most Wanted hit the ring, and after a super kick and a death sentence, Jeff Jarrett's master plan came to fruition, but there was more to the story. All right, guys. <laughs> Right here. Wait, what is? You know what the next step is? Right here. Just wait till we get this fight. We're taking over. My God! Gail Kim has joined AFW and Jeff Jarrett, and they are annihilating Team 3D. Ashes to ashes, <laughs> dust to dust. If it wasn't for America's Most Wanted, Team 3D might still be with us. <laughs> once one of the greatest tag teams in professional wrestling. Iron Man, Commander Brother, Commander Fitz was a tag team dream match that turned into an absolute outright nightmare. I can't believe what I've seen. Why would they do that? First, the money. TNA and take our spot. Oh, 
Association with the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, Jarrett, and yes, accompanied to the ring by Dale Kim. AMW, they once again hold the tag team gold. Chris Harris. You're right, tearing the bandage off the head. Oh, he's going right at him. He just wants to mess him up right from the start. You're right, of Andy Douglas. Meanwhile, Chase Stevens and James Storm now battling inside the ring. I'll tell you what, AMW, I mean, they had to catch their breath right there as the Nationals just came flying at him, but they are, they are veterans. They are, I don't even know how many cha time champs they are anymore. Oh, he skins the cat. But wait a minute, Andy Douglas was there. Set him up, and Jay Stevens, oh my gosh, right into the rail. Man, that killed his back. Wow. Running power bomb, back first, goes through right into the safety rail. Well, AMW now with that win as a team. America's most wanted six-time NWA tag team title holders. Individually, it's actually seven times for Harrison Storm, but as AMW, a total of six. Tell you what, the Nantros have been a team that has always had incredible luck against AMW. They've always been able to figure them out and read them. Last night was, was something that they were not ready to deal with, and they want them back. They want those belts back now. Oh, look at this. They are just fired up. Well, they take Storm out of the action with that power bomb into the rail. And then the double team on the Wildcat who bails up the rail. I'll tell you what, man, Jake Storm is hurt bad. It's right here in front of me. He is hurt so bad. Real to see the cockiness of America's Most Wanted, the association with Jeff Jarrett, the quote unquote funeral for Team 3D, burying their careers in essence. It's unreal the way that power, the way that control has gone to the head of two guys, Don, that you know we thought we knew a lot better. Oh, I, you know, I always admire their work in the ring. In fact, you asked me about my 10 favorite matches. And a disappointment to see how AMW has reacted. I guess not a surprise after the alignment with Jarrett, but now Stevens and Douglas the Naturals look to take back the tag team belts. I'm gonna tell you something right here. This is a chance for the Naturals to take advantage. You can't see it, but I'm telling you, James Storm is just hurt bad when he took that shot to the rail. Think of the impact of that move. Oh. The running power bomb, it drove him back first into the slip. It bent the drive rail. Hit. Meanwhile, Naturals with the double team on the Wildcat, and there you see the tape from Andy Douglas wrapped around the neck of Wildcat Chris Harris, referee being distracted by Chase Steele. Wildcat right now, I think he just, he's stunned, he's looking for his partner. I'm telling you what, his partner's not anywhere to be found to help him, that's for sure. This is. This is a shot for him to go 2 on one Andy Douglas Oh, now. no, and he look, went look right at, at the yeah, back. Exactly, and Gail Kim gonna try and get it. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Storm just reaches down with something, and he goes right back to pay. But he just slams him right back into the post. Momentary distraction by Gail Kim. You're right, Don, allows James Storm to turn it around on Andy Douglas. I'll tell you what, he's playing through pain right now. I'll give you that. This has just been a brutal rematch. Oh, yeah, right here in front of us. 
and he slams him right on the belt. James Storm reaching in, there's blood. He busted in, he does his back open. Don, my God, there's blood all over the broadcast table. I know, table. it's all over my shirt and everything. I mean, Storm is just mad. And I mean, he's taking it out, he's somehow Flipping his way in, I'm telling you, he's doing it on sheer guns, and this could be the advantage that AMW needs. Oh, and now Harris, look at this, pulling back the hair and driving those shots right into the head, trying to open up that wound even more. Oh, man, Andy Douglas, he just, you can just see it. No, oh, now you see a little teamwork right here. Oh, what a shot with everything he's got. Andy Douglas has got to get a tag to Chase Stevens. Looks like James Storm has recovered. Big shot to the side of the head, and now he's got that tape from the wrist of Douglas trying to wrap it around his neck. Shows you how brutal these, these events are. I mean, this guy, it took him, what, six, seven minutes to get his breath after this slam. It should have been enough, but here he goes. Gonna try to do the old eye of the storm, and he does it! Man! The Whirly Bird style move. He calls it the eye of the storm, and James Storm in the tip. Douglas rolls the shoulder at two. Shot for Stevens on the apron. That's the last thing the Naturals needed was for Storm to get a second win, and now the confidence is gonna go on to Chris Harris knowing his partner's back. Might be too devastating, and look at this. They're going right back to the quick tags and just setting him up, and he grinds the tape in the fist right in the, the gushing cut. The style of tag team wrestling that did make AMW and still does make them the most dominant tag team in the world today. And he's the legal man, and he's dishing out right hands for both Harris and Storm. Just going right at it right now. I mean, Jay Stevens, I think, can feel a little desperation. Doesn't know when they get it. Oh, he comes flying off the ropes and nails him, and then he nails Storm. I mean, Jay Stevens is on fire. There goes the Wildcat into the ropes and high up into the lights with the back body drop. Stevens swinging a miss with the clothesline. Elevates Storm to the apron. Oh, he caught him right there. Oh! Right there by the natural Quick one. pin. Two. No. Communication problems for AMW almost enable the Naturals to take back the tag team titles. Went for the super kick. Storm had it blocked. Missed our clothesline. Missed the kick that time, but that kick didn't miss. I still think the pain in the back caused Storm not to be able to get that super kick up there. Oh, I thought it might have resulted in a pin, but Jay Stevens can't finish it off. Gail Kim just tossed oh, wait something a minute. in. Chris Harris. Oh, no, you can tell what it is. What is it, powder? Looks like a bag of powder, it sure is. Oh, these guys have just completely... Oh, did you see Chase do it right in his face? Kick it back in his face. Now they've got a blinded oh, one. Wait a minute. It's got his own partner. He's got the catatonic on his own partner. Oh, man, he thinks he's done something good. This is a chance right here for the Naturals. something most men don't have. Storm back up. Stevens, head from behind. Here it goes. Natural disaster if they can elevate him up. Oh, they got him. Gail Kim gets in the ring. Oh, you can see right now the referee gets distracted, and oh, it was a good shot for Storm to get out of it. He sees knock Stevens down. You're right. Gail Kim gets involved. Andy Douglas is distracted, not with the Naturals' need. Oh, you can just see. Oh, he's got her by the hair. Oh, I can understand it. Oh, wait a minute. What in the world just happened right there? He's got hands up. Handcuffs. Wildcat Chris Harris with the hands. Oh, and he's got Andy Douglas tough. He's hooked to the steel guardrail. Oh, no. Now it's two on one the other way. That safe guardrail that almost took Storm out is now holding Andy Douglas hostage. Mid-ring exchange, Storm and Stevens. Stevens drops the Wildcat. Oh, he's fighting. 
Hart with everything he's got. Oh, another blow right there. Now, Stevens gonna try and take Harris and bring him in and does with the suplex. Whoa, what a show of strength right there by Jay Stevens. He's gonna have to reach down now. He's on his own. Drilled him with the enzigiri, put him in the kick to the back of the head. He'll score him up again. Well, you can see referee Rudy Charles, he doesn't want this at all. Storm uses it. He hit him with the bottle. Oh, he Look, did. He the broken glass. The oh, it's all right. over the ring. He smashed the bottle over his head. Oh, Andy Douglas pulling on the rail, trying to get back in. Just like we saw an impact. Now, AMW motions to each other. Oh, look at him pulling Andy Douglas. And they're going to finish him off. Did you see? He said elevate. Head to the top. How hard is this for Andy Douglas to watch? He's helpless, chained to the rail. He can't do anything, can't come to the rail. And here comes the death sentence. The storm holding him in. Oh, man, I don't know if he can handle it. Two, done. The winner for the match, and still NWA World Tag Team Champions, America's Most Wanted. Keep the gold, yes, they keep the power, and they keep the control. America's most wanted. Retain the tag team titles in their first defense against the former champs, the Naturals. I'll tell you what, though, they had to cheat to win, and it's a whole different AMW than, than we're used to seeing, and it's hard for me to stomach. I mean, people that I admire so well, and I still admire their ability, you can't help that. But to sit there, and oh my goodness, Storm's got him a chair, and he wants to take out more revenge. Oh no. Oh, the man, man is defenseless. The man is handcuffed to the guardrail, and they just hit him in the head with a steel chair. Come on. Enough's enough. Get these guys out of here. Coming up next in Bound for Glory, it's the Monsters Ball. Starting at midnight on the eve of Bound for Glory, Abyss, Jeff Hardy, Sabu, and Rhino to be locked in separate rooms. No food, no water, no light of day until they're turned loose at Bound for Glory for a Monsters Ball match. Weapons not only allowed, they're encouraged. Look out! simply known as the Man Beast. Oh, 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 oh. Six feet eight, 350 pounds, and he's on the attack. Think about the monster fist and might have an advantage with James Mitchell at his side. There's going to be carnage. There's going to be brutality. Wait a minute. Oh, no, not the tax. The thousands and thousands of thumbtacks. Here comes Jeff Hardy, and now you're seeing all four of the men to be involved in Monsters Ball. Jeff Hardy's gonna have to rely on his athleticism, his daredevil attitude, if he's gonna somehow come out on top in Monsters Ball. Oh! Sabu! Look at how he's able to put his body on the line. He's not afraid of anything. You've got so many different personalities. There's a match that you not only have to be better than your opponent physically, more important, you have to be better mentally. See one of the most brutal, one of the most vicious matches in the history of wrestling. Tables, chairs, ladders, anything they can get a hold of. There's no restrictions in TNA. What's he doing right here? They turn them loose in TNA, and they're going to turn these four men loose at Bound for Glory, October the 23rd in the Monsters Ball. The level of violence is about to go off the charts. Coming up next at Bound for Glory, it is Monsters Ball. Get ready for an anything goes matchup. Now let's hear from James Mitchell, the mouthpiece of the Monster Abyss. He's with Shane Douglas. Bound for glory, the four-way, no DQ, false count anywhere match where all four contestants have been locked in a box since midnight last night. No food, no water, no light. Their minds must be running rampant. And I'll say this, this is perhaps the most aptly named monster's ball because we have the 350-pound monster abyss under your tutelage. That's exactly right, Shane. You know, I fully expect 
for Hardy, Rhino, and Sabu to be diminished physically and mentally after spending all night in a box with no food, light, or water. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Shane. During Abyss's childhood, he was forced against his will to spend countless nights and days in those exact same circumstances. So what do you think made him the monster he is today? Inviting Abyss to the monster's ball is not unlike inviting a combat veteran with a purple heart to a game of paintball. On one hand, you may have a little fierce and friendly, albeit messy, competitive fun. On the other hand, you just might dredge up some ugly, long, repressed memories and have a massacre on your hands. And instead of being covered in paint, you find yourselves covered in copious amounts of blood. So Sabu, Rhino, and Hardy, now that I've empowered you with that knowledge, why don't you ask yourselves, how do you think the six foot eight, 350 pound weapon of mass destruction, the monster abyss is going to play the game tonight? <laughs> Right 
into an abyss. Oh! Realized it went right at him. Sabu, steel chair right into the head of the monster abyss. And then on the offensive with Rhino. Man Beast shoots him off into the ropes. Now charges at Sabu, who tosses him over the top and down to the floor. Rules? Anything goes. It's false count anywhere in the impact zone as Hardy springs off the steel chair, connects with the knee, and the monster is going to go to the well again. Uh oh man, and Hardy goes flying over the top. You were going to explain the rules, folks. There's no point. There are none. Other than false count anywhere, keep that in mind. Yep, bring your own weapons, use your own weapons. They've been locked up in solitary confinement from midnight last night until the pay per view began earlier this evening. Been let loose in the monster's ball. I'll tell you what, the cameramen have a chore in this match like no other chore they've had. The viciousness, the brutality, you can see it already. There's already Sabu busted open. Oh, it's a dangerous place to be in the pit with these four men turned loose. Abyss and Hardy battle on one side of the arena. Sabu, you're right, he's been open up on the other side, and there goes the monster into the retaining wall. Tell you what, great move there by Hardy as he used the business momentum and threw him in. And now you can see Hardy going up to the top right there. Look out! Oh, no, crazy, and he catches a fist perfectly. Double sledge from the top of the bleachers. Hardy has got a miss on one side of the arena. You can see Sabu has been busted wide open above his eye. It's got to affect his vision. And think about the eye, how sensitive it is. Of all the places that Sabu can be bleeding, right there at the eye, it's got to be the worst. It affects his vision. You know, the pain that you get from something stabbing your eye, it just, it can really disorient you and take you off your game. And when you lose your vision in a match like this with three other competitors, you're done, man. You know, you're, you're, you're in difficult position. Yo, you got that right. There's a, you can't see in this match. I feel sorry for you. Yeah, because it's falls count anywhere. Because you have wrestlers coming at you from every conceivable angle and position. And Jeff Hardy says, let's dump the weapons out. Chair shot. Sabu just nailed the man beast right now. I'll tell you what, this is one of those matches where these people, afterwards, the pain they got to feel, the, the, the physical impairment they're going to be dealt as here comes Sabu. times 12 hours without food or water. Went to the twist of fate. Oh, no. Abyss has him up. Shock treatment. Dropped him down to the backbreaker. That'll take the wind out of you in a hurry. You can see Hardy right there grasping his ribs. It's exactly what that move did. And Sabu's going to take advantage of it with the cover. Trying to get a quick one right there. And it's, I mean, you got to, you, at times you might work with somebody, but for, it's every man against himself. Oh, you're right. It is every man for himself. And you're seeing that play out right in front of our very eyes. Steel chair. What a shot right there. Oh, oh, oh man. One for Abyss. One for Sabu. And oh, another for the monster Abyss, courtesy of the man beast Rhino. Abyss gets the food up. And here goes. just seconds ago. Sometimes they work as a team, and sometimes they don't. Oh, I'll tell you what, Jeff Hardy learned a valuable lesson right there. Do not trust anyone, and Sabu just made him pay. Like, oh, oh stand man. here, and a vicious kendo stick shot from Rhino, and batter up home runs, courtesy of Rhino. All three, he's been busted open, too. I'll tell you what, it is just, I told you folks, it's brutal, and I'm surely you've got the little kids out of the room by now. Stick shots. The Singapore Kane, and he's gonna set up for the four. Look at this okay. position in the corner. If Abyss gets to his feet, oh, Abyss does, and he gets him right into the choke hold, and there we go. Slap him now. My God, choke slam. Back first goes Rhino on the steel. Ten, two. Oh. I'll tell you what, Rhino.
I know his size is so deceiving. I mean, height-wise, you're right, six foot three, 275 pounds. But you look at those legs, man, and you see tree trunks. You see a powerful source. And he uses them so effectively. Huge power, strength, edge in this matchup for the Man Beast Rhino and the Monster Abyss. But you know, it hasn't been a detriment to Jeff Hardy and Sabu yet, as we see Hardy take it to Abyss. I'll tell you what, Jeff Hardy, in my mind, although that mistake he made trusting Sabu was costly, has really been on fire, and there he grabs the ladder. You talked about it earlier. You said Jeff Hardy is known through the years for employing the ladder as a weapon. And Abyss just caught him and dropped him with the ladder. Meanwhile, in the ring, Rhino using a weight belt on Sabu. Oh, this man, is shots out here. Abyss just applying that pressure, that ladder right into Hardy. I mean, just going right at him. And did you notice? He was using the ladder. He was hitting him in the stomach and in the knee. Going to try and take out the high flying of Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy right now reeling, and you can see him. I mean, this is a position where you don't want to be. You don't want to be on your back or on your butt and have nowhere to go. And he's in a corner. He is literally trapped in a corner. You're right. And James Mitchell as well, directing traffic, positioning and motioning for Abyss to set up the table. Table's in place, Hardy's down and out. Now what's he gonna do? Gonna put a second table in position? I'll tell you what, folks, as, as, as he's doing that, you've got Sabu out. setting up a table right there against the rail as he goes right back at Rhino. I mean, we're, we're doing our best, folks. It's just mayhem is Hardy right now. It's somehow gained the advantage. It's just mayhem. It's just monsters ball and bound for glory. Chair shots by Jeff Hardy, one after the other to the top of the head of Abyss. I'll tell you what, he's got Abyss really right there. Is, is, is he going to hit him one more time just to kind of level him? He does. I can hear it. As, oh, no, you got Rhino trapped on a table. And Sabu oh, sets man. up the chair. I'll tell you what, here he goes. Sabu going to come off the ropes. He'll spring off the chair. charts 
It has been everything we expected. Table position, Sabu with the chair. Oh, and he drilled Abyss with it. Abyss is, I think, reeling still, because he was so focused on that table, he forgot him. Sabu was right there. Oh, but look at the power. Oh, no. Put him in midair. Oh, right on the table. A table that Sabu had set out earlier. This time he's dropped by the monster, and he went chest first, and he just smashed right through the wood. Oh, Abyss right now. and broke that table Oh, into what pieces. a gore! Right in! I'm telling you, you can't take your eyes off anybody! Hardy now, back in the action and back in the ring. Face push goes right over to the top turnbuckle. Amazing recovery by Hardy after one of the highest high-risk moves, my God, I've ever seen in my life. And you know what? He did one from a spot even lower than that, and I thought it was the craziest thing. That was insane. Hardy gonna follow Rhino up from the middle ropes. Here's the size advantage here. Is he gonna go for the Rhino driver? Oh, here he goes! No, 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 not from the middle row! Oh, oh my yes. god! My god, you're gonna break a man's neck like that! Pin him! One, two! Oh, Sabu! Did he get it? Did he pin him? Did he pin him? Yes, he got it! The winner of the Monsters Ball, Rhino! My god, what a spectacle! The Rhino driver off the middle rope! Jeff Hardy, my God, he pulled it up, Don. It could be very, very serious damage to his head and neck. Oh, I'll tell you right now, he left the, the Rhino driver was too much for him. Rhino able to get in there and listen to this crowd. It's the only word that describes it. You're right, it was awesome. Guys in the truck, if there's any way we can do it, we're gonna take another look at everything that went down here. Oh, Sabu! Look at these high-risk moves from Sabu taking down Rhino, putting him oh, in the that right That's there. the one. That's just unbelievable, and you can see the beating that these guys took in look here. Look at this! There's the Rhino driver. And there you see it. Rhino gets the pin, and Rhino wins! Monsters ball! Wait a minute, could this be it? Could this be the decision from the championship committee? Guys, I think this, this could be. Shane Douglas is in position. Championship committee member Larry Zabisco's there. And NWA championship, Jared, take it, Shane. Ooh, the scuttle button in the dressing room legend is that you finally have come to a conclusion, made a decision as to who the opponent for Jeff Jarrett the main event will be tonight. I'm dying to know, legend. Who is it? Everybody's dying to know, Shane. There's no time for politics here. I've got everybody on my back that wants a shot. And to make it fair to everybody, this is what we're going to do. We are going to have a 10-man over-the-top gauntlet match. The man who wins that match is going to get a shot at Jeff Jarrett at the heavyweight championship of the world. That wait, 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 wait a second, wait, Jeff. Wait, no, wait, disres wait. no disrespect intended, Jeff, but let me get the franchise with this straight. You're telling me that you're going to take 10 men who've already competed at Bound for Glory, put them in a ring in a 10-man over-the-top rope gauntlet and decide who the ch champion's opponent will be? Come on, is that fair to Jeff? He's entitled to certain things as the champion. He's entitled to know his opponent. He's entitled to have a game plan. Larry, Larry, Larry Zabisco, I got to ask you one question. I got to ask you one question. Is this your idea or is it TNA management's idea? I tell you, no, 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 you shut up and listen to me, Larry, because this reeks, this stinks, this smells of a screw job by TNA management. And you know why? You know why? Because I've got all the power around here. And you know how I have all the power around here? This belt. Zabisco, I've been screwed for the last time. I want to know one thing, who I've got to prepare for. Tell me who the 10 guys going into the gauntlet are. We've got time to go into the list, but talk about fairness. It's not fair for the other 10 guys either. They have no game plan. They haven't had time to prepare for this. They've already wrestled before, Jeff, so I don't want to be sucked into this. Look it, Destiny dealt the hand we're all playing tonight. Destiny can solve the problem. So good luck, champ. Hey, hey, don't you walk away from me. Larry Zabisco, we got a deal. Larry Zabisco, this is a bunch of crap. He's got him hooked in the clutch. It's a variation of the sleeper. Oh, can he hold on? AJ Styles is dead on his feet. 
blood streaming down his face. He sat there and, and gritted his teeth and decided that he was going to hold out to make that match a 1-1 one -one tie and force into some overtime. Oh, he came on a counter! Oh, deep down, deep down. Months, I ruled the X Division. I defeated everyone. You stole the championship that was mine. Why don't you pick three of your best friends from the X Division, and I guarantee you, I'll beat them all. He bragged that he could eliminate three men in 15 minutes. Two down, one to go. Oh man, I guarantee you, Christopher Daniels wasn't thinking this. This right now is not even about this challenge. It's about these two guys who just can't stand each other. Both of them just put themselves in the DNA. And well, well, it's hard enough for him to beat him one on one. Here's a spring. Oh, he just won't die. A better night to redeem the wrongs perpetrated against me than Iron Man 2. Bound for glory. 30 minutes. It's up next and bound for glory. It's the X Division Championship on the line. They're gonna go 30 minutes under Iron Man rules. Phenomenal AJ Styles and the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Reset look, great arena shot. Here at Universal Resorts, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, and let's bring in the X Factors. For Styles and Daniels, it's plain and simple. Win the most falls in 30 minutes and be recognized as the X Division champ. Back in February, and against all odds, these two men fought for the X Division title under these same conditions. Tonight, it's the highly anticipated rematch. It was eight months ago. You just saw it. Daniels had a bloodied Styles locked in the Koji clutch. Time expired. In overtime, the Styles clash beat the Fallen Angel. Who will prevail tonight at Bound for Glory? The following contest is the 30 minute Iron Man match for the X Division Championship of the World. About to make his way to the ring, he is the challenger from the City of Angels. This is the self proclaimed Mr. DNA. He is the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniel. Yes, he was announced. Division title holder, and he's going to try and get it back right now. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent. He is the current reigning and defending X Division champion of the world. He is the phenomenal AJ Scott. There is nothing this man has not accomplished in TNA. He's held every belt more than once. That his company has. But the last time these two were locked up in Iron Man match, he was lucky to survive as he held on for dear life with the blood gushing out of his head. He wants to beat Christopher Daniels decisively in this match because a lot of people still feel that Daniels had bettered him in that match. Challenger takes a look at the belt. Positioned high above his head by senior official Rudy Charles, and how about the fallen angel? Even before the opening bell, he's on the attack. Well, he, he's been looking forward to this ever since AJ Styles took his belt away from him, and he wants to get it back. And he also loves the fact that this is a chance for him to beat AJ Styles and maybe beat him badly in front of all these crowds who admire AJ Styles. So. appreciating the talents and efforts of both men as you hear cheers for both Styles and Daniels. Countdown clock, top of your screen, 30 minute time limit. Very simply, win the most falls in this 30 minute Iron Man match and walk away with the X Division title. High overhead press slam by Daniels takes the champ Styles down. I mean, there's no question as to what the game plan is. Get as many pinfall and submissions as you can. Get the key as often as you can. Last time these two went at it, I believe it ended up one to one, and they ended up having to go into the overtime. So these things will not be gotten lightly. I mean, you're looking at two people that know each other like the back of their hand. Great exchange.
exchange by Styles and Daniels. AJ shoots Daniels off. Fallen Angel springs off the middle ropes and over the top of the head of AJ, who fights back with right hands and knife edge chops to the chest. Takes him down with the arm drag, then oh! Takes him over his knee with the backbreaker. Beautiful shot right there. AJ Styles is somebody we've always talked about how innovative he is in the ring. Not unlike his competitor out there, Christopher Daniels. These two guys probably have more ring awareness than anybody you'll see. Watch AJ. Here he goes. Oh. You talked about it. That kind of awareness. You also mentioned earlier about how they know each other so well. And an example right there is Daniels was ready for him. Cartwheels over Styles and catches it with a right hand after right hand, grazing shots to the side of the head of AJ. Well, he knows so well. Uh, how nice drop kick right there by AJ Styles. Wow. He, but Daniels knows that if AJ gets these high flying moves over the ring and the crowd involved, it really does become a home field advantage. AJ slingshot to the apron, lands on his feet, and then, oh man, used his power to shoot Daniels right into the safety rail, and he went over the steel and landed in the crowd. Oh, nice forearm shot right there to the face of Christopher Daniels. Got to make mention, how about the ruling by Larry Zabisco from the championship committee? It's going to be a top contender's 10-man gauntlet over the top rope gauntlet tonight here in Bound for Glory. Then that winner of the gauntlet will have an NWA World's title match with the reigning champion, Jeff Jarrett, is AJ. Oh, all the way over the rail as he shot him off the steps and over the rail. Think about this, though. In that gauntlet, not in, in Jeff Jarrett was complaining. But think about it. What an advantage you have as he'll have somebody that's had to work through a gauntlet and then get them later on tonight. And I say advantage of Jarrett. Well, potentially, not only wrestle through the gauntlet, Let's, let's think about this. There could be wrestlers involved in that gauntlet that have already had a match before that tonight is... Oh, Styles caught him with the chop to the chest. What a crushing blow to the side of the head. Oh, the dear. impact of it knocked Daniels back over the rail. Guarantee you, nobody that wrestled in that last match is going to be able to make that there. Holy cow, what a brutal, vicious match that was. Daniels rolled in. Styles going to go for the cup. Legs hooked, two count only from referee Charles. AJ right back to the basics. Gonna wear him down with the side headlock and regroup at the same time and get your strategy in order. I'll tell you what, there's so much offense involved in an Iron Man match, but it's also about survival. You're gonna find yourself with your, your shoulder blades pinned against the mat. The key is, is you can't get the three count. And it doesn't matter how many two counts somebody has. It doesn't matter. Oh, you're right, near falls, they don't mean anything. We're talking about pinfalls or submissions. Oh, he's drained the oxygen right there out of Christopher Daniels, and you can see it. See that. Look, he's, he's going to pop his head like a pimple. I can read his lips, and he's just pulling right there. Yeah, you see Daniels motioning with his finger that he does still have life. He tries to shoot AJ off into the ropes, but AJ just powered him right down and cinches up on that headlock even stronger and even tighter than before. I mean, if you ask these guys what their game plan is, it's this. Get them so immobile that you can maybe get three or four quick pins on somebody and get that kind of lead that is just almost insurmountable. Daniel's gonna try and get back up to a vertical base and does. Back up to his feet. That enables him to lift Styles up, but he takes him right back over to the side headlock. These guys are just such, such incredible mat wrestlers as well as this, being able to do things that most people dream about doing. I mean, they're so technically sound, Mike. Five minutes plus gone in this 30-minute matchup. Neither competitor has yet to score a ball, either pin or submission, but Styles, I think without question, has been in the driver's seat for the opening five. Oh, absolutely, man. He's just kind of a strategy, and he's just going right for the neck just to keep the oxygen away. Look how he goes right back at it. He's almost got a quick pin right there. Well, you're really right. It is sound strategy from AJ as he squeezes the life out of Daniels on that side headlock, and at the same time, notice the weight positioning of AJ, using all of his weight along with that side headlock to wear down Daniels and take away his air, take away his win. I'll tell you what, the crowd right now, I think, expecting to see maybe something a little different, but there's so much at stake here. This is the X Division gold, and the only way you can do it is to get more pin. Oh, what a shot right there by the shoulder of Shoulder block reached to a pin attempt, and you notice he recognized that Daniels was going to power
power out at one, and he immediately went right back to the side headlock. That time, AJ's shoulders were down for a one count from the Fallen Angel. I'll tell you what, though, AJ not wavering from this. Going, wait a minute, Daniel's almost stolen right there, and here he goes. He's got that head out of there. He's got that neck out of that vice. And look at him apply the elbow right there on the left shoulder blade of AJ Styles. And while he neutralizes Styles, Daniels tries to clear the cobwebs at the same time. You see him shaking his head, trying to get regrouped and refocused. Well, the crowd right now, the, those that are behind the fallen angel, see things turning a little bit. And this is his chance, and he can see him pulling and torquing on that left arm. Oh, and he's got it. You're right. He rings it out. On the arm, the elbow, and the wrist of AJ. Quickly kips up to his feet Look and out. reverses encounters with the exact same move. The guy's amazing how he thinks on his feet like that. How do you able to go? Oh, AJ's got him. Here one. Oh, no. I think he just outsmarted Daniels. Did you see that? Daniels thought he was going to do a very similar move to AJ. AJ cut him off in mid move and went right back to the side headlock. I'll tell you what, Daniels not able to use his strength here, not able to use his offense at all. AJ Styles, you talk about grounding somebody. AJ's done it. Look at this. Outsmarting again. Look at step ahead. Throat. When Daniels went for the drop kick, caught him with the perfectly placed boot. Now goes airborne and drops a forearm right across the top of the head of Daniels. Oh, I'll tell you what, man, that knee shot too right there. Look at this. Is he's over? Could this be pin one? No. It's almost like a, a test of strength to your opponent by getting up on one, you know. It's one fall right there, so you're letting your opponent know that, hey, you're not going to get close. And that's what Daniels' message he was trying to send. Chuck by Styles sends Daniels reeling into the corner, and now AJ takes the fallen angel and drives him face first into one turnbuckle, and then does the same thing on the opposite side. And AJ Styles is just dominating this, but you know what? It doesn't mean anything. Not he a still has a lot of pain. Although, think about it, Don, yeah. in a 30 minute match, what he's doing to Daniels at this point, he may not get a pin in the first nine minutes or first 10 minutes, but think of the wear down effect as this match continues because we're gonna go 30 minutes regardless of how many pins or submissions these two guys get. AJ, cover, could this be two? Nope. There's also the frustration level that goes on when you're so close to getting pins and you're not getting anywhere either. And if, if Daniels can find a way to get some breathing room, Maybe he could turn it around, but like you said, right now, he's exhausted and he's got 21 minutes to go. And I sensed maybe a little bit of frustration looking at the body language from AJ. He took him from all sides of the six-sided ring, drove him headfirst into turnbuckle after turnbuckle, thought he had him weakened, went for the pin, didn't get it, and you just noticed that AJ was disappointed. Oh, I'll tell you what, though, he's got his game plan. He's sticking to it, that knee right into the small of the back, and then he just pulls back Whoa. on the head. Nice backwards headbutt, though, by Daniels. Wow, reverse chin lock. The heads did collide. I'm not sure if it was Styles or Daniels that went for the headbutt at that time, but oh, AJ, just, he just put that one right through the uprights. Taking Daniels to school here, folks. Taking him to school. This guy is so good. Do you remember, Don, as we near 10 minutes plus in this match, and AJ hooks the death lock. Now he's going to oh, try no. and watch him lean back here and grab the reverse chin lock at the same time. Look at him just pull right there. I mean, think about the pain not only on his neck, the pain in his leg. And you're right, his legs are wrapped up in a pretzel. At the same time, he's yanking back on his chin, putting all of the pressure on the neck. And for the 10 minutes of this match, what has AJ been doing? He's been wearing down Daniels. Oh, look at that. He just neck. bit him. He's biting it right there on the thumb. Well, that's one way to break it. <laughs> Have you ever seen Christopher Daniels? So dominated by an opponent for a 10 minute stretch, like we've seen by the phenomenal AJ Styles tonight here at Bound for Glory. I can't remember if I've ever seen him so desperate as to have to bite somebody to get out of a hole. But I'll tell you what, I don't blame him. I mean, right now, you gotta do everything you can. Quick reversal by Daniels. Charges in at Styles, takes him up. Nice shot right there by Daniels. He's gotta get some offense here. Daniels lands on the apron and now gonna try a clothesline. Instead, AJ blocks him in. Do you see that? Left, wow. arm, left arm lariat knocked him back in the ring. Think about what this is doing mentally to Daniels. Every single thing that he's trying is not working. AJ is one step ahead the entire match. Yep, but it's still zero falls to zero falls. High risk off the top. Oh, oh, oh that's what we're talking about. They know each other so well. Everything he had right there might to counter that. The desperation move by Daniels, it paid off, but now he's got to get back in the game mentally. He's got to refocus on style. 
Referee putting in the count. Rudy Charles counting both men down. First to get to his feet, Daniels to a knee. Pick Styles up now, gonna try and fire him off. Oh, and he doesn't. He's ready and he decked him with the clothesline. He just dropped him with the lariat. I'll tell you what, this is his chance. He can't let up though. I mean, these guys are in such great physical condition that, you know, it's, it's amazing that they can even go this long. But right now, you can see how quickly the momentum can turn. And this is Daniel's chance. And oh, he just twisted the head off right there. Man, that hurt. Crisp move with that snap mayor takeover. Then follows up with a head vice, and you're right, twisting AJ's neck at the same time. For the first 10 plus minutes of this matchup, we watch AJ concentrate his attack on the head and neck of Christopher Daniels. And now as the complexion of this match turns in favor of the Fallen Angel, we're seeing Daniels exploit that same strategy working on the head of Styles. Lateral press by the challenger, but AJ able to avoid the three count. I tell you what, it's a little nonchalant on that pin attempt right there, and I understand he's tired, but you can't be nonchalant. You got it. One pin might be the difference in a man. What a backbreaker right there! Tilt the world backbreaker. Near leg hooked. Just a two count for Daniels on Styles, the challenger that time. You can sense that frustration from Daniels. He thought he was going to go up one zip. I'll tell you right now, though, did you see how AJ Styles' back just bowed back like that? And I mean, something like that knocks air out of you. It's back to even Steven, man. I mean, it's all that work that AJ did in that first 10 minutes right now has been completely reversed. Daniels' offensive focus remains on the head and neck of the champion. AJ going to try and fight him off with elbows. Second one connected right to the midsection. Third one. That stopped and rocked Daniels. Charges at him. Quick roll out. Oh, here he goes. Two, did he get it? No. Almost got it. Quit. Here he goes again. Another pin attempt, another roll up, and another near fall. Oh, look at this. Daniels, though, has got the hole. Look at that. Almost the same thing we saw when that blood was spurting out of Daniels' head at the last it's time. The man. exact same hole. It's the Koji clutch. The move that was made famous in Japan by Koji Kanemoto. And Christopher Daniels brought that move to the United States, and he's using this submission style sleeper to wear down AJ. Is he gonna get him to tap? Oh, he hit once. Oh, look at the strength of AJ. He didn't tap. He just drove his hands down to take his extra strength and power and try and lift Daniels up. But Daniels, Not enough. Daniels repositions and goes right back to the clutch. Not enough right there. But look at him. He's gonna try it again. Look at this. The pure determination, and he gets to the ropes. That's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> wow. Wow. Daniels is going, what in the world do I got to do? Oh, I'll give you a quick elbow. How about that? It's for good measure. You know, we don't often see that kind of raw power exhibited by AJ Styles. Known much more for his high-risk offensive moves. Known for those, those phenomenal top-risk moves, but that time we saw when he really needed it. He showed his raw power and strength against Daniels and got the rope break. I mean, let's face it. This is not the kind of match for all the high-risk moves. And that's what they are, they're high risk, and it can end up costing you getting pinned. As you can see him going right there for the backwards moonsault, he's got it. Two, no! Wow. Split leg moonsault by Daniels. Landing, crashing down across the chest of AJ. Went for the pin, but now the still front. didn't put him away. And there's frustration yeah. right there. Not only punches to the head, but the blatant choke hold directly in front of senior official Rudy Charles. And you're right, it is frustration. You realize, man alive, like you're not getting anywhere. And both these guys are feeling it. I mean, they've given everything that they can. They've had their, their shoulder blades to the mat so many times, but they can't get a three count. We have reached the halfway point of this 30-minute Iron Man matchup. And it's zero falls to zero falls. Neither wrestler has the advantage. Another attempt at a tilt to world backbreaker by Daniel Styles lands on his feet. Springs oh, back. He's got it. Gonna drop oh, him. Oh, oh, Caught yes. him at the DDT. What a shot right there by Styles. As he's so smooth on that DDT right there as he comes in behind. But the offensive efforts of Daniels had weakened AJ to that point where, yes, he caught him with the DDT, caught him with that reverse move, but he's unable to go for the pin. AJ getting to his feet first, it looks like. As you can see, Daniels needing the ropes right there to get his balance. AJ Styles doesn't waste a second. He comes right at him, and again, close line, elbow, another lariat, and another elbow. Look at that spinning kick right there, and Daniels just reeling right now. Oh. The head with the spin kick, and as AJ went to set up his next offensive move, 
Daniels went face first to the canvas. You can see right now he's thinking, what's the best way I can go to get this pin? He's just looking it over, analyzing it. You know, we always talk about AJ being able to, to improvise during a match, to be able to think on his feet. And, and, and you're right, Don, it appeared as if he was doing just that as he takes Daniels up, crashes him down with the suplex. Cover, two, nope. Daniels just got so much fight in him, man. He's, he's been so close to getting pinned, and he's just not gonna allow it. Sheer willpower. I mean, they do it just on gut instinct. AJ first to his feet. Daniels slowly getting up. Pump handle. AJ's got him up, elevates him, and that time took him across the knee. Gut first. Pin, two, no, not yet. I mean, that was even, I mean, that was such a neat move, how it looked like it was gonna be a backbreaker. And then he spins him right into the gut and knocks the wind right out of him. Another one of those improv moves that we talked about earlier, especially when you're the opponent, when you're Daniels. When you're right, when you think that it's gonna be a backbreaker, and then in mid-move, he spins you around, catches you in the midsection, oh, but this time Daniels catches it! Death Valley driver! He oh, just spiked man. him! He dropped him on his head. If he leans back, he's gonna get a cover! You know, he got it! He's got it! No way! Just no move. way did he not hit that! I'll tell you what, though, we talked so much about AJ and his improvisation. How about Christopher Daniels? Opportunistic. Man, he saw that, caught it in a split second, and almost had a pin. Daniels, his ribcage showing the effects of the moves by Styles, but trying to fight through the pain. Catches him with a double chop, sets him, positions him in the corner. Big right hand to the side of the head. It rocked the champ. Out of the corner. Canvas. He thought he had the first fall in this Iron Man matchup, where the most falls gains you the victory, and you walk out of bound for glory as the X Division champ doubled him over with the boot, went for the spinning neck breaker, that was blocked by AJ, and he caught Daniels with the boot, elevated over, and drops him down. Hangman's noose neck breaker out of the suplex. I mean, just the, the drama that unfolds right there, how AJ, the hesitation, and you know, as he goes for a quick one right there, but he can't get it. As, as Daniels was just kind of suspended in air for just a second, you could see he had nowhere to go but on his back. AJ back up to his feet. Daniels to a knee. AJ gonna charge at him. Daniels sidesteps him, shoots him off into the corner. Here it goes again. Oh, he counters it. Snap Mayer out of the attempt at that. Inverted DDT. Now One, Daniels, two, two, no. Wow. I can't believe what they're seeing right here. AJ laid out while Daniels All goes way to the top and it's perfect BME. Double spring into the best moonsault ever. Cover. Two. He's got it. No. He got it. No. You're kidding. Just two. Oh man, was that close. He's used the Koji clutch. He's used the BME, the best moonsault ever. Death Valley Driver. <laughs> you name it. And still has not. Put away AJ and look how smooth that replay is. Replay you see, it's just that one beautiful fluid motion and movement, but no, it doesn't lead to a pin. Quick go behind by Daniels. It's blocked by Styles. Maintaining his grip, neutralizing the attempt by Daniels, holding on to his hands. A series of elbow shots at the side of the head rocket. As we, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, go under 10 minutes in this Iron Man match, 30 minute time limit, neither man has a fall. Got him up in the back right there. Look at him, just kind of like a torture rack right exactly there. Exactly what it is. Oh, man, he hits it. One, two, got it. No! Oh, my God. Had him up in the torture rack backbreaker. Spun him down, dropped him on his back, went right for the pin. But amazingly look enough. Look at the look on his face. He could just see the pain and frustration. You're right, it's agony on the faces. It's etched in their faces because of what they've gone through for over 20 minutes with neither man attaining a fall yet. AJ Styles realizes that might be as close as you come. Look at him, he's almost leaning on him to get his breath, leaning on him for support, and then he reaches down. Oh, but Daniel's able to grab himself and stop himself on the ropes. Now AJ charges in, Daniel's moves out of the way. AJ crashed and burned in the corner. Here comes Daniel. Oh man, and it took him right outside! The impact, oh. the impact of that running knee by 
Daniels, and you're right, the champ goes out to the arena floor. He caught the steps out there, too. Daniels going to try and spring off the ropes. Here he comes. Oh, all the way through. Oh, man, he sits him into the concrete. Diving through the ropes. Suicide dive by Daniels in the back of AJ's hand. No, there's no rubber mats. There's no protection out here. Can we take another look in the truck, guys? And you're so right. Look at this. This is right on the concrete. You can see where he can't get the steps. And he caught the steel ring steps on the way down. And then here it goes. Daniels back up. He senses now that he has the advantage. Oh, the full advantage with AJ down on the floor. Gonna roll him back in and go for the pin. Daniels has a move in mind. Gonna grab AJ from the back while he's on. Oh, the Pele! The Pele! He does it all the time and he always hits it when you least expect it. I don't know if that could be seen. I don't know if we got time, but that was unbelievable. The master of improv as we talked about on the fly coming up with a move like that that catches you as an opponent so unaware out of nowhere the pele kick to the top of the head by styles now it's daniels who's on the floor now it's the phenomenal aj styles in the ring and now it's aj's chance to fly Here he goes. oh man was that beautiful just poetry in motion and he crashes in the And then, look at the flip dive. Wow. These guys are two of the best you'll ever see in your life, people. We are back live and bound for glory after those great replay it's looks. zero, zero, I, As we approach the seven minute mark, seven minutes and under, with the X Division title on the line under Iron Man rules, neither man has yet scored a ball. AJ back in the ring first. One pin can do it right here. I didn't think that was gonna be possible. I really thought you'd see maybe a five to four type of score, but I'm gonna tell you right now, think about the middle advantage a pin would get you if you could hurry up and get one. AJ gonna try and oh. bring Daniels, who is weary, back into the ring with a suplex. Daniels Fallen got Angel. that yep. leg connected to the rope right, right there. Fights him off both by hooking the bottom rope and by a series of shots to the rib cage. What's he doing right here? What in the world? Uh-oh. Oh, man. Look out. AJ Scott trying to hook it right here. They landed with a thud. They heard it here in the impact zone, and I'm sure you heard that oh, thud. I gotta this see way. this again, Mike. I gotta. I couldn't quite see it. I mean, AJ is almost out. Look at this. He's fighting, holding on, and then it lets go. And oh man! Backdrop suplex by Daniels, and both champion and challenger are down as we go under six minutes, and still neither man has scored a fall. This has really evolved into a, a war of attrition between these two at this point. Who's going to be able to fight through and get through this last five and a half minutes? And Don, who knows? Could we go to overtime again? I mean, you've got to solve it. I mean, you have to. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I could stay here for two hours if these guys can physically do it. It's just, you're watching something special right here. Crowd at Bound for Glory appreciating the physical efforts of both champion and challenger. Daniels first into the ring as he goes under the ropes. Look at that, he hooked the leg of the referee, Rudy Charles. He grabbed him by the foot to, to help himself back in. That's really what this has turned into. They're fighting through the pain as we go under five minutes. It's survival, Mike. It's all about survival right here. You've got to find any kind of an advantage in the kick right there to the face just to get yourself some leverage and some breathing room. And to get your bearings back as well. Daniels in, AJ out. AJ, you can sense the pain all over his body. I'm sure the same for Daniels as well. They've gone through 25 plus minutes of hell. The crowd right now realizing that something special is going on. Who is going to win this? You think that by now there would have been at least one or two pins, and there haven't been. Both men exchange chops. Daniels goes for the forearm shot. AJ caught him again. Well, you know what? As I saw AJ out here, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. 
not sure if you can see it on your screen at home, but AJ's legs have been bruised. I mean, from the shot oh, there, you see it on, the, on that left, on the left leg. leg after he went oh, through it. That's what he Quick roll up here by there David he got it. And did you notice what he did? He hooked that leg. He hooked the leg of AJ in the pin attempt and almost got the three count. I'll tell you what it is, you can see he's in pain. I, I bet you that's what he went through and hit that end Absolutely, of that it's when he hit the steel steps. Rip I spotted it when he got up to go in the ring, and you can see oh, look it right at it. there. It looks like a, oh, a blood vessel. Quick pin here he goes. Miles got it. Oh, oh man, AJ so. I mean, when he sees something, when he sees an opening, he goes right at it. I mean, he can, it could be look like the most dire moment. Another ball, but he missed it. That time he missed. Quick side roll. One, two. Pin. No. AJ went for the Pele. Now AJ He's with the side roll. One, shoulders of two. Daniels. No. Momentarily had the shoulders of Daniels down. Headstand. Spring back. Right into the German suplex. Released him overhead. Oh, look at the look at the fire in AJ. And he just came right up and gave up the spinning clothesline. Discus clothesline by the champion AJ Styles. Under three minutes. They just spin all their energy, Don. They dig down deep, they go for that kind of a move, just like the discus clothesline, and it takes them a couple of seconds to get back in it. Oh, the leg bruising of AJ Styles. I'll tell you what, though, what I really noticed was how AJ fired himself up right there. You could see, I mean, he didn't have much left. But he did, he fired himself up, and now AJ getting to his feet. This is his opportunity, he knows it. Pin, gonna try and get an easy two, one. Two. Every, it was gonna be that easy. Each and every pin attempt at this point in the matchup becomes so vital and so important because, yes, it is. Most pins are submission in 30 minutes. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. You ready for the two-minute warning as we go? Yes, under two minutes in the Iron Man match. Oh, a shortcut right there by Daniels as he pokes him in the eye. Not that I blame him. Oh, look at AJ. How does he move that? Grabbing onto the short spike. Oh, another kick to the back of the head by AJ. That one leveled him. Leg hook, one, shoulders two. down. No! We're down to 40 seconds. Can anybody, oh, look at the head right, jawbreaker right there. That's the counter move. Running kick by Daniels Rock Styles. Here he goes, Angel's wings. Under 30 seconds, half a minute to go. Angel's wings. champion and challenger. The phenomenal AJ Styles proves yes, timing is everything. The Styles clash, the ensuing three count, my God, with two seconds remaining in the 30 minute Iron Man match. And AJ gets the pin, he gets the victory, and yes, 
He remains X Division champion, but damn, what an effort by Daniel. Yeah, you gotta give congratulations to both competitors. I don't care who you like. If you weren't impressed by the two of these great warriors, you don't have a heart and you don't have a soul. Oh, AJ. Let's take a recap look at this incredible X Division title Iron Man match. Oh, man, you can see this is when AJ was in total control, and then Daniels at this point was taking over. I mean, it was just a seesaw back and forth. Oh, the vicious. I mean, it was unbelievable that only one pin. That's where the bruise happened when he hit the snaps. We thought AJ would get the pin right here. No, that was just a two count. That was a near ball, but the Styles clash proved to be the difference. And look at this. One, two, three, and then the buzzer goes off. Fighting through the tears of joy, AJ Styles remains. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the same boat as everyone here in the Impact Zone and all of you at home. We know that Championship Committee member Larry Zabisco has ordered a 10-man gauntlet with 10 top contenders. The winner of that over-the-top rope gauntlet will challenge Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World's Heavyweight title tonight as well. But we don't have any idea, Don, who's even in the gauntlet until they're introduced. Let's find out oh. along with you. The following contest is the 10-man gauntlet to determine the number one contender and tonight's challenger for Jeff Jarrett. Introducing entrant number one in the gauntlet, he is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Show. Oh my God! What a way to start! The crowd goes crazy. Samoa Joe has a chance to win the world championship. Introducing entrant number two in the gauntlet, he is Ron the Truth. Let's remind everyone of the situation that we're in here and what the rules are for this gauntlet. These two individuals that started off, Samoa Joe, Ron the Truth Killings, they are going to go for a two-minute time period. After this initial two-minute period, we will have a new entrant every 60 seconds, every minute. Two-minute opener, Samoa Joe, Ron the Truth Killings, and then every minute, another new entrant. And ladies and gentlemen, we have no idea we're with you. We'll find out at the same time as you who's up next. You took the words right out of my mouth. I just get ready to say, Professor, we don't have a clue who the next ones are going to be, and they're not going to tell us. I'll tell you what, this is the first time these two. You can see that he's mocking Samoa Joe, I believe, here at this point, after what we saw earlier from the Polynesian dancers. Never mock a man's heritage, I'm gonna tell you that. It's not a smart thing to do, and, and of all people, Ron the Truth Killing should know that. And I think you're screwing with the wrong guy, Truth. Oh, man, he just went a little too far. Trying to psych him out, but that's the wrong tactic with this man. Look at Killings. Quickly up to the top. How did he do it? Oh, what a shot by Killings. Joe never saw that coming. Oh, that was wicked. Remember, you are eliminated. Just one way. Being tossed over the top rope and down to the floor. Once we get down to the final wrestler of the ten, we will then have a pinfall or submission NWA World's Heavyweight title match with the champion Jeff Jarrett. Basically, we don't know who the first 10 are, but we know these two, of course, but we know number 11, oh boy. and that's Jeff Jarrett. Killings trying to take the 280-pounder, toss him over the top rope. Joe fighting back, the and here the fans coming down. We're gonna find out who's three, up next in the ball. Two,
I'll tell you what, look at him as he goes. Oh, he goes right for it. I mean, Sabu's incredible. To go through the punishment that he went through earlier. And then to come right back out here and to take it to Samoa Joe and Ronda Drew Kelly. And you got to think about Samoa Joe, somebody who wrestled the first match of the night and your body cools down and it's not ready to go again. Ronda Drew Kelly, think about this. All these people. Oh, what an advantage Jeff Jarrett's going to have. Remember, all TNA wrestlers were told by championship committee member Larry Zabisco, you must be ready for action. And that's what we're seeing here in this moment.
some rhino. The man beast who earlier was victorious in Monsters Ball. He hits the ring and he just pulls like Big Lance right out. Lance Hoyt's been eliminated. His dreams of a heavyweight title are dashed. Oh, what a kick right there by Sabu into Samoa Joe. Think about it, the truth that Samoa Joe have been out here from the beginning. You're right, Don. What an effort by both of those individuals. They've been able to fight through competitor after competitor, and they're still alive in this 10-man gauntlet. But you can see Sabu is just so beat up. He doesn't have anything left. You saw Jeff Hardy, he didn't have much. Right on, obviously. Your next entrance in five, four, yeah, three, two, and Sabu. two, one. Who's up next? The next entrant. takes down the Monster Abyss, and you're right, huge edge for Kip James here, the fresh man. I'm just asking the question here, because of all the excitement we couldn't see, but has Sabu been eliminated? No, he hasn't. I think he's still in, Don. You're right, it's been wild. Wrestlers he's coming out, but we have no idea who the next competitor's gonna be. Sabu fighting himself back into the ring right there. I don't know that he went over the top rope. I'm trying to find out. I think Rudy Charles is telling him that he has in that corner. We'll get the information when we can, but Kip James cleaning house. Boy, Kip James really taking it to all the competitors in this 10 man gauntlet. In five, four, Who's next? Three, oh, it's got to be Raven. Two, it's got to be Raven. He did. No way. The next entrance. Shutting Raven out. And the championship committee as well. Shutting Raven out of the gauntlet. And AJ Styles who retained the X Division Championship, winning Iron Man. Now he's got to come out for the gauntlet. I'll tell you what, that asking him to come in is asking too much. If he was to win this, it would show a Herculean strength that men don't possess. And obviously, Abyss realizes that. You can't ask him of AJ. You are getting confirmation. Yes, you are correct. Sabu is out. We do have that official confirmation as we see the Monster Abyss and the phenomenal AJ Styles square off. And, I, and we apologize. So much action going on, it's hard for everybody to catch everything. But they are down now to what, these five? Well, we have Monty Brown, we have Jeff Hardy, Lance, Lance Hoyt, and Sabu eliminated. Jawbreaker that time. Samoa Joe and Kip James. Again, over the top rope. That's the only way that you're eliminated. Sick Six kick. people left. Stiff kick by Joe to the chest of Kip James. Rhino squares off. Tell you what, and Samoa Monster. Joe is somebody that the longer he stays in here, I think the more confidence he's going to get. He goes right after the truth, trying to throw him up over the top. The truth using his leg to hold himself in. Truth on the verge here of being tossed out by Samoa Joe. Killings holding on for dear life. And I'm trying to fight off and does. Elbow shot to the midsection of Joe. Everybody right now is just trying to hang on. Remember dear the life gets Jarrett. After this match for the NWA title. Styles and Kip James swearing off as we see James Mitchell with obviously some words of wisdom to the monster abyss. Now it's Abyss and Rhino squaring off. Joe and Killings. What a battle they've had. And think about it, Samoa Joe and Ron the Truth Killings still out here, the original two. I'll tell you what, AJ Styles still in, and the longer he goes, we've seen him do some phenomenal things. Kip James, you see, gets Lance to the ground. Rhino still available. I mean, it's just right now, all these guys are dead tired from everything they've gone through. What's going AJ trying to pick up the truth, trying to eliminate him. Truth fighting with everything he's got. Truth hangs on and Truth survives at this point despite AJ's attempts. Look out for Kip James. Is he out? No, he lands on the edge. Oh, wait a minute, he does fall off the edge. But you see, at the same time, he pushed Killings back in. Unbelievable, and that momentum he used to push Killings in is what eliminated him. Boy, almost like he, he helped him stay, he did. He helped him stave off elimination. 
AJ misses with the kick. Oh, Ron, the truth misses, and there goes AJ, and it's unbelievable he can reach down and find that. Killing's gonna try and get back up to his feet and take advantage of the situation by eliminating AJ, but AJ digs down and just tossed him up and over. Is he out? Please, Kip, Kip James is trying to help him. Well, that's Kip James trying to help the truth. Trying to help three live crew. Think about that. He's shown his loyalty again and again and again, and now around the truth is eliminated. The referee's made the right move, though. Kip James was already out. You can't help someone. I'll tell you what, I admire that. He seems to be sincere. Oh, what a kick from Samoa Joe into the chest of AJ Styles. Rhino and Abyss on one side of the ring. Styles and Joe on the opposite side. AJ fighting back, left hand shots on the side of the head of Joe. Opposite side, Abyss has Rhino throttled in now. Drives the boot right into the midsection. You could just see him trading blows back. Look at AJ, just again, oh, what he misses right there. And now Samoa Joe's got him, and you gotta wonder how much AJ can stand. Joe locks on the choke. He's got the submission. Oh, look at this, Abyss! Rhino's been through hell and back tonight. The Monsters Ball, 
that incredible four-way matchup earlier that he was victorious in, that he wins the gauntlet, and now he faces Jared with the NWA gold at stake. I'll tell you what, Rhino's just gonna have to pick his spots. If he sees an opportunity, he's gonna have to hit it, and he's gonna have to be relentless. Because Jared, you gotta maybe even make Jared get a little cocky right here, because Jared knows. He knows he is in so much better position right now, and you can see him take his great advantage of it. You can see the cockiness. You can see the confidence on the face of the NWA champion as he made his way down to the ring, and now he takes Rhino. Oh, he drives him face first right into the steel safety ring. Get up, oh, Rhino. Rhino, I mean, what's he going on? Sheer emotion, just, sheer adrenaline? That's it, just pure fumes at this point for him even just to be able to get back up to his feet while Jarrett sends him from steel guard right to steel. Oh, oh look, look at him now. Right here, right here at the oh, table. Oh, he right on ring. the belt. A bloodied rhino. The man beast goes face first into the title belt. And now, oh, oh, God, man, oh, one right after another. This isn't even a fair fight. Oh, look at this. Jarrett just busted open the garbage can. Oh. He's destroying our set here at the oh, broadcast good. table. Gosh, this isn't even a fair fight. Just absolute, now he's got him right here on the casket. Ah. And the blood flies Come everywhere as the, as the bloody head of the man beast rhino is crashed against the casket and Sharon bad mouths and gets right in his face. Tito Ortiz letting it go, he's telling him to get back in the ring. That's what you gotta do right there, get him back in the ring. Oh man, Jared, no! Oh, right on top of the casket, you can see. Just knock the wind out of him, Mike. Oh, get up! And get now, up. Get up. open get hand up. slaps. Get inside. Just, One more, he's been physically decimated at this point. He's just taunting him right here, just taunting him. Oh no, rolls Rhino back in. Jared, don't see this often. Uh, high risk perched up on the top. He's just gonna finish it right Just here, waiting for Rhino to turn, and when he does. Oh, oh, there it goes. I mean, it's like Rhino can see it coming, but I don't think he can, his brain can get to his body to move fast enough. Drill him with the clothesline. NWA World's Heavyweight Title at State. This matchup sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance, and Jarrett doing everything within his power to keep the goal. Jarrett back to the top. Up, Rhino. Rhino trying to get to his feet. Just Believe challenging it. Rhino to get back up to his feet. There goes another one. Just end oh. it. Dropped him, drilled him with another clothesline. Jarrett, a third time going to go to the well. You don't often see it one time with Jarrett, but now for the third time, the champ up on top. Oh, this is just insult to injury right here, literally. And then wait a minute, Rhino. Jared sidestepped him and put him shoulder first right into the corner. I'll tell you what, he should have just went ahead and hit him. Wait a minute, you can see right there, Gail Kim going to the top rope. Tito Ortiz, Huntington Beach no. bad boy, special enforcer. Oh, it's not gonna happen, he's gonna, look at this. But Gail Kim in mid-air, oh, turn down. Trying to be a gentleman here. Laying down the wall. Oh, you don't try to slap the man. Not the baddest man on earth, oh God. Okay. Well, that's one way to take care of Gail Kim. See ya. Set her up on the apron. And what are you going to do, Tito? He's trying to do this diplomatically. No, no. Jared's oh, got, the, got guitar. the guitar. No. No way. Oh, he's he's the guitar. Oh, gosh. He just caught him straight on. And of course, Tito or Tito. Tito never saw it. He didn't see it. Jared crashes the guitar over the head of Rhino. Tito Ortiz, of course, is not familiar with the referee job here. Jared, he's distracted you, and trying to keep order, and it just cost him right up. And you can sense here that Jared knows he's got him beat. It's pin two. Oh, he gets his shoulder up at the time. What? Jared can't God. believe it. Only a two count after that guitar shot, after everything else that Rhino's gone through. Oh, for God's sakes, here comes AMW. Oh, this is, this is just wrong. But they're giving him another guitar. Associate oh, what a shot by Ortiz! And there's one for Storm! Oh, oh. 
Monsters Ball. He wins the top contenders gauntlet. He deserves to be the heavyweight champion of yeah. AEW. And he just has done the unthinkable. He wins the NWA World Title. And now Jarrett and AMW are beating the hell out of him. Oh, this is just wrong right here after everything he's gone through. This is just frustration and no one. I love it. We don't need security. I want the crew, and here they come. Here comes the three live crew to save Rhino. It's Conan, it's the truth, it's BG James, as their crew hits the ring, and they're, they're real. Well, who's Wait a minute, here comes Team Canada in. We saw them at the funeral. You can see that they're over there taking care of the three live crew. Yeah, the Canadians have hit as well. Oh, and now this is all strength and numbers at this point. Come on, let's get it. The three live crew and Rhino. Taken out by AMW, Jeff Jarrett, and Scott Demore's Team Canada. What gets me is this takes away everything that they oh, did. No. Everything right that they did. What are they doing now with this casket? They're taking it into the ring. Remember what Jarrett said? He said no matter what, somebody was leaving here in the casket. Somebody's leaving bound for glory in a casket. Rhino's already beaten him for the NWA World's title. Oh, man, I'll tell you something. The numbers game was just too much, and it's so sad after what Rhino's gone through. This is sick. The blood just oh, look at it. coming down his face. And, of course, symbolically, it's oh. a guitar shot, and then they're going to fail. Oh, another one, man. What is this guy going to go through? He put him in. Oh, that is just awful. This, this is sick. This is a horrible way to leave you at Bound for Glory. Oh, sorry, that's no longer your belt. No longer your belt. You don't own it. You can post Wait a minute. Could it be? 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 It is Team 3D. No freaking way. Here comes Brother Ray. Here comes Brother D. This has been a presentation of TNA Wrestling.